Hello everyone. Welcome to SAP S4 HANA Central Finance Training by Zarantech. In today's complex business landscape, organization needs financial systems that provide real-time data and consolidated reporting across multiple ERPs. We'll start by examining what SAP S4 HANA is and the key drivers spurring its adoption. Then we will dive into the central finance explaining what it is, its benefit like a single source of truth reporting and simplified mergers and acquisitions as well as how it consolidates financial data across system. We will wrap up with the high level look at central finance implementation consideration like integration points and project planning. But before we begin, Please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for the regular updates from us. Now let us take a look at the agenda. Agenda. What is S4 HANA? SAP S4 HANA Key Drivers SAP S4 HANA Central Finance SAP S4 HANA Central Finance Benefit Group Reporting Merger Acquisition Consolidation Comparison with other financial solutions, project planning for CFIN, integration of CFIN with other SAP systems. Hi everyone, welcome to the training on SAP Central Finance. This is Subham here. I have around eight years of consulting experience plus training experience. I've taken multiple trainings on SAP S4 HANA Finance as well as SAP Central Finance. So basically like before going to central finance, we should understand what is S4 HANA first because yeah, central finance is basically based on top of S4 HANA. So let's get to what is S4 HANA first. So as we all know, I think most of you are working on S4 HANA. So I will just have a quick introduction of S4 HANA and then we will quickly move to the introduction. Today's session will be mostly introductory basis, introductory, introductory nature only to have to know like what is central finance so that on top of that we'll build the configuration and knowledge on how central finance is structured how central finance helps the business why central finance is required at the first place even though there are multiple consolidation solutions already in place in the market by sap and from other vendors as well what is s4 hana first so like s4 hana is the fourth generation ERP which has been simplified on it works on the S4 HANA database. So if you, it as the name suggests like S4 HANA only. So this is the suite for S4 HANA. And again coming by on the memory side. So basically what has happened was earlier that there were memory requirements will be huge. Data storage will take a lot of time as well as if you see in uh, SAP ECC if you for the accounting information all the data will be stored be stored in uh, bsec table but even though like when sap will suggest not to use the bsec table rather use the index tables like uh, bsis bsik etc the reason was that if you put take the data directly from bsec the it will take a lot of time to process the data and as a result, the system will get down to slow. So based on that, SAP introduced this S4 HANA database, which has been working on like it will take store the data in RAM. And we all know that RAM is very much faster than the will be faster than the fetching data from the read only memory or the hardware. After it will be like, yes, this user interfering was a reverse revolutionary technology like earlier when we are working then it will have you need to have the SAP GUI or SAP login pad installed then only you can access SAP screens or SAP data but with SAP Fury you can uh, take the data directly from like you can log in from your mobile app or browser you don't need to have the SAP GUI installed or you don't need to be in front of the system to access the data and as well as the rules we are also quite improved with the um, SAP Fury again it simplifies the functionalities like if you like go back to s4 hana and compare it with the ecc there were, there were a lot of functionalities which were improved especially the introduction of the universal generals like ac doc a ac doc p so 
it reduce lot of reconciliation effort when earlier if you see like for co2 fi reconciliation it was taking lot of time but now we have all the data reconciled in real time uh, whenever any entry is posted and for any cfo if you ask like what will be the biggest kpi for them or what is the most that they want from any reporting system not only as for another they will say okay faster closing is my kpi where like it's fine that users are having access fast but for any company the legal reporting and that should be done as soon as possible after the closing so we have the reconciliation is resolved we have all the data at one place and now you can like use a single table to for or your fi reporting or fi based reports even for the managerial reporting which in turn will have a faster closing time now coming to like what are the implementation option like what whether it will be for s4 hana whether it will be for central finance so both since yeah central finance is based on s4 hana it will like by default you need to have the s4 hana license on top of that you will implement like uh, take the central finance package from the sap and then you you would be able to provide the central finance configuration or implement the central finance so similar to s4 hana we can have all the three options for implementation of central finance as well which is on premise so in which you will own the hardware everything will be stored the data will be stored and the hardware will be stored on the customer premises cloud where you will be kind of renting the hardware or software from sap directly and then you will be implementing the central finance hybrid version where we will be using like mix of both uh, cloud as well as s4 hana on premise version like for bigger entities you can use um, the on premise version for a smaller version which have less customizations uh, or the implementations we can use uh, cloud version and then you can combine them both for the reporting purpose you will have one single source of truth so everything will be like kind of on one click for the hire management to make the decision making uh, now coming to implementation approach so what do you think like in the central finance will have like whether it should can have greenfield system conversion or landscape transfer so sifin project will always be part of your landscape transformation even though you implement a new uh, fresh version of central finance you are not touching the processes which are being used in the existing system designs or existing erp systems which are already in use so uh, the your existing erp system if you are having central finance a big mnc it can have uh, multiple systems in it may be ecc it may not be ecc and secondly like with uh, big companies always there will be mergers and demergers so there will be new companies with separate set of process might be coming into the group and some companies for key businesses and they might be moving out of the group or for selling or it can be xyz reasons uh, so for that it is very easy to implement those scenarios like either moving out of a company code or legal entity or even including a new legal entity into the system it will be very easy to get the reporting done without impacting their existing processes into their existing erp whatever they are using they can continue to use in the exact same way and only the reporting part will be handled uh, by a central finance in a like very non disruptive way so any questions still here yes so basically yeah so we'll be covering this topic in the upcoming session as well because when we uh, take the deployment approach but what happens is if there is an sap system sap will directly pull the data from the staging tables like whenever there will be a trigger based approach we will say that whenever there will be any accounting document posted or any document is posted it will automatically log into the staging tables and from there slt will pick the data 
but whenever there is any non scp system is involved be it like people software other non scp or even from scp system it is if it is business by one or business scp business one so in that cases also like directly based on like some scp sessions you need to pull the data into a staging table uh, probably by a technical development so once any document is posted it comes into the staging tables in sap like so directly it will not be triggered by approach rather a custom logic to pull the data into staging table and from there result will pick the data and it will be implement uh, coming to central finance via real time replication but yes we can implement in erp system be it uh, sap non sap or so let's say that you are owning a laptop like this is a simple laptop so when you have the mm -hmm. hardware installed on your system let's say that when we use like mostly when we use our personal laptop we have our rom and ram inbuilt in our system so that means we have mm -hmm. the hardware hardware with us so in that case similarly like if you have the on premise version so you need to have your own hardware like you need to buy the memory separately you need to have the like ram separately so basically there will be one room where you will be keeping the servers and then the data will be stored there so everything like the data will be in your premise like the even the hardware for the memory that will be on your server and then you can customize like the solution will be you can customize and the data will be stored on premise so that is on premise but what happens is cloud is that uh, let's say that you are using a vmware or virtual desktop so in that you open a link and then from that link it opens to a different virtual desktop and the configuration or the data is somewhere stored separately when the, I mean that means the server is somewhere else and you are using via virtual machine so similarly for cloud uh, sap have their own data warehouses where they have these servers installed they provide the preset configuration which you can like uh, fill and use as per your business need and but yeah the limitation with cloud is that you have very less option to customize sap will give various templates various functionalities under which you have to fit your requirement and customization options are very limited so in the cloud version you are not owning any hardware you are kind of renting it on a subscription basis and you are implementing it hybrid okay. version is when you are using both like s4 implemented is not required s4 hana servers are required so basically you need to have s4 and then on that you need to uh, have the siphon business function uh, package included like implemented by the technical team then you able to configure so the database okay, required okay. for central finance is sap s4 hana s4 hana implementation is not a prerequisite okay, so let's go to the next slide so why s4 hana is required and what are the key drivers like basically why any company should go for s4 hana so before that let's go understand a little bit more about siphon so in order to understand siphon you should know that it's like a, not just a functional technology like that you can just when knowing the functional you can implement just like a, let's say if you're implementing s4 hana finance or fscm for say so once the technical team has done with the installation you can go ahead do with like access the functional transactions and implement it primarily like mostly on your own uh, if you have the prerequisite knowledge but with central finance like as its name itself suggests that it is integrating multiple systems across the erp nature so it will have various other technical skills it will be required uh, let's let's say from fscm uh, you have fscm knowledge you can implement but for central finance you will have slt requirement technical notes uh, should be implemented in uh, source system as well as in siphon system and then some additional customization if mdg is you are using then for mdg you will have it, uh, mdg skill set is required so that will be covering their roles in the subsequent session as well but what we need to understand is like since there are a lot of technical skill set also required apart from s4 hana so primarily what we'll be covering is as a finance consultant what will be our role into central finance project like when we are working on the central finance project be it implementation 
or be it from the run perspective or uh, support perspective so like uh, okay so let's go back to why central finance is required so i think you are two people who are working on central finance so do you can you like give an idea why business wanted to implement central finance for your systems like what was the use case for central finance where the most of the clients are using bw for their consolidating the data but bw we have the challenge with the extractions and transformations that the data will be transferred maximum once in a day or for some clients they use once in a week also so the data is not in the real time when you extract by any like where the batch warehouse or wherever you are using the data it's that is one of the challenges that the data is not in the real time second is mapping and harmonization so what do you mean by mapping and harmonization so let's say that there is one company xyz and they have been operating in more than 50 countries all the 50 countries will have different legal rules which they are following for their legal reporting all the 50 company codes will have a different set of gl account chart of accounts and let's say even for for same purpose like let's say if they are reporting the assets in the one system there can be different numbering for gl account and other system there can be different numbering for gl account so when you are extracting let's say to the bw then it will have the same data it will not be harmonized to a single gl account because ideally assets from both the company codes or across the company codes those should go into a one set so even though you have the data in the bw at a delayed time then also you are not able to use it right away you need to do so many manual calculations to have the data right in a specific format or in a specific like set which you can use for group reporting so which will lead to your reconciliation issues because 50 is different set of data you do manual work and more the manual work you do higher the chances of manual mistakes and subsequently delay in reporting or delay in the decision making if it is for managerial reporting then again it's very difficult to validate the data if you are having let's say 50 different set of data and again there can be many company codes which you are as you said like for if it is non sap systems are also involved then it becomes more complex you need to and the data will be in one warehouse for the one systems like sap systems it can be connected to different bw systems or it can be some data can be into other systems as well and to integrate again you will need some other technologies which will extract which will calculate the data on the go which will again lead to further delays and then coming to business issues which is arising out of the complexities that we discuss so one will be limited transparency you cannot trace back to the issue if you face any inconsistency or the issue let's say that if you face a difference of some amount it will be very hard for you to find like where is the exact error whether the system calculated in after the bw or bi data has gone wrong or the data in the source system which came that itself was incorrect so that will be very much difficult to trace back which will result in the productivity issues because during reporting time already you are working on the or the business is working on the tighter deadlines and such delays which can be caused by these differences will lead to the reporting delays as well as the employees will be frustrated that this is the system is having so much so many errors okay, coming to any questions on this again coming to like what will be the business benefits if you adopt or if business adopts to central finance so one is that you will be centralizing processes across systems so if you need to have any process improvement if you want to have the central payment activated let's say then currently the business is operating into chunks so if they have multiple system involved they will have 
different shared service centers or different vendors who will be performing the those shared service let's say for payments usually companies will outsource to a different company and they will be operating for a few com few company codes and they will have there will be multiple partners involved who will be following this uh, processes separately for each country or each erp systems but when you implement s4 hana central finance so you can like everything you can maintain in one system and then only maintenance of that system will be required like in the central finance you, you will be following those processes and it will be traced back to and fro from source system to central finance system so in this case you will be having like uh, the business will save costs by centralizing the process as well as it will simplify the process which is a big benefit for any business to have the simplified business processes all the assist, all the data is at one place all the data is on the real time these are few big benefits for the business with central finance systems and again as i said like central processes will be on one at one vendor or at one place centralized so it will ensure that everything is on the top of the higher management especially for those who are involved with the group reporting or group level decision making for them it is nothing but a blessing any questions still now again this part we have already covered in the earlier slides so this is a data warehouse means flow for the when we are using any data warehouse uh, systems let's say bwc so you will have all the systems connected to the warehouse systems and then you will have the data flowing from this via rfc or via apis wherever the data is connected and then you will have either weekly or daily batch job schedules which will move the data from one system to another like and then it will be like yeah, you need to reconcile before reporting at the group level which will be having a manual work and it difficult to drill down to the original source in case of any inconsistencies or even if there is no inconsistency you want to check whether how the data came from so with uh, the drill down facility is not available if you are using these systems any warehouse systems this will be a typical structure when you are using central finance system or when you want to implement a central finance system so this will be your primary structure like you will have this systems multiple whether it will be like it should be sap r3 4.6 and above if there are if your sap which the source systems are on is having less than this version then you need to contact sap sap will implement some further notes and then you will be able to implement uh, central finance on those source systems directly you will not be able to implement then your erp systems which are primarily sap source system or in non erp non sap erps it will come all the erp systems <coughs> all the non sap erps as well as if you are using sap business one also then also it's treated like for central finance perspective all the processes for that is treated similar to if you are using a non sap system so sap business one is mostly used by small businesses for which are using the sap erp so the structure will be this systems connected to an slt system slt is nothing but it will be the staging table like it slt has many other business cases as well but mostly it is recommended by sap to use slt for the intermediate data, trans data transfer and then slt system will be connected to s4 hana central finance system which will transfer the data in real time so what you will get uh, after implementing central finance is that instant ins insight like whatever the data is posted almost immediately it will be available will come will like will discuss again in about the delays which can happen or the errors which will be which can happen due to inconsistent configuration inconsistent master data or missing master data or multiple reasons so that will be covering in uh, future lectures how to handle that you will have all the data at one single source of truth which is ac doka it will be on real time basis unlike the other data warehouse system which we are using for consolidating and the one 
again additional benefit which we get by implementing central finance is that we can build our processes on top of the data which has come so it's not only that the data which has come to central finance it will have the data replicated and then you just need to report so it's not like that after having the data you can build additional processes you can plan the data you can have the group reporting you can even have the cash balances analyzed or you can have the central payment dunning etc from the data which is there in the uh, central finance system so which is one like uh, major difference compared to any other consolidation tool in the market today again user experience with fury it will be since most of you are working on s4 or finance you already know about the fury again since the reconciliation issues are reduced by quite a lot like almost nil reconciliation issues you have you can your closing time will be reduced for the group yeah you can drill down the data let's say that you have a document which is posted from source system to central finance system so from that you can get to know what was the document which came from your source system or sender system and then if there is any mismatch in the balances it will be very easy to get the root cause of why the difference came or you can even drill down from multiple reports to the sender documents and also you can build the analysis for office reports based on the data and then you will have a very much granular report which you can like almost see till the sender gl account to what what it was posted in source account to what it was posted in central finance and whether there is any mapping issue harmonization issue till that you can uh, get the data any questions on this central finance structure so the it will be connected to uh, your source system will be connected to slt and slt will be connected to the central huh. finance system so the data flow will be like that so from source huh. system to slt and slt to central finance so in that also we have two part when we like we'll discuss hmm. when the replication start one is that initial load so before you start you need to transfer the balances or open items yeah yeah and, okay. and then from once you complete the implementation then the real time replication will start so those have little bit different strategy of how the data is fetched from slt or via rfc so hmm. that we'll discuss in detail in the upcoming chapter once you get the system access i agree that once you have practice directly on the system you will have the mm -hmm. complete mm -hmm. idea so, so once you have the system access we can i will go through the system landscape directly in the system as well but here like right now you are using ecc system or any s4 hana system so on that there will not be any changes that will be posting as usual and the same data it will come to central finance system with new mapping so again yeah probably on third lecture we will cover how the mappings mm -hmm. are MDG is recommended by SAP, but not mandatory to use as a MDG. You can implement without MDG as well. But MDG is recommended solution by SAP. But yes, once you are using IDOC, like currently if you are using any IDOC, so directly you cannot uh, have the like you need to customize the IDOC segments before using it because there will be a new segment because once let's say that you are using GL account one in your source system and with the similar properties there can be let's say gl account 5 with similar property in another system and yeah. with central finance you want to consolidate so you will ideally business will need a gl1 from your system and gl5 from different system should so come back to a single gl in central finance so you will need that mapping so if you are using idoc you need to customize such that both gl1 and gl5 they come to a one single gl let's say glx in the central finance system so those customization will be required but yes that is feasible coming to this slide so this first two parts we have already covered what are the benefits of the central finance system and yes like companies agree that they have this benefits but main challenge comes in the implementation like where most of the companies big companies they have a very complex erp structure and it's very difficult for them to migrate or upgrade to a single system because uh, the each system will have their own challenges in 
coming to a standard set of process if they want to transform their systems separately that they don't want if they don't want to change the processes and source but they want to have the benefits which s4 hana is offering so this is probably the only way which they can have it by implementing the central finance system and second is that if they want to migrate to any s4 like if they are an ecc if they want to migrate to the data uh, migrate to s4 hana system like separately via greenfield or from by brownfield approach so that becomes a very big project for them the migration will be successful or not because those have a lot of challenges especially on the logistic parts each plant will have their own set of challenges in migrating the data and only for like mostly cfos or in they will be worried about the group reporting at the at the group level on the central finance so they want to have the consolidated financial data but you don't want to migrate to s4 hana separately or you want to migrate to s4 take the benefits of s4 hana faster then central finance is like relatively easier and non disruptive way to implement Uh, the S4 would like take the benefits of S4 without changing the processes or without hampering the existing system landscape. Again, this will cover more like when we check in the systems directly how we are migrating the data and all. And then you will get to know the benefits. So once the system accesses are ready, we'll uh, go back to this again. So now coming, what are the options available for any customer? if they want to transform the processes so and then what is the best options for them or relatively easier risk so one is that upgrade and migrate like if they are using let's say multiple sap systems as well so they can migrate to one s4 hana system they don't like xyz like the multiple sap systems they can migrate to one single s4 hana system again this will be a time taking process for them because s4 hana project in itself takes longer time then you need to have the all the workshops starting from scratch for all the modules all the processes so this will be a multi year long project for them and as a result businesses usually they will take will be hesitant to upgrade to s4 hana if they don't get the benefits or if or even if they decide to upgrade it will be a uh, benefit that they will get in long term rather than immediate once the s4 is implemented rather than the immediate again upgrade migrate and consolidate this will again have two reasons two business reasons when they have this uh, setup one is that some of their ecc systems are on lower versions which does not support migration to s4 hana directly in that case they want to and they will have to not want to they, they they don't have choice they will have to upgrade to a higher ecc versions and then they can migrate to s4 hana other cases is that uh, one of the clients which i worked they had multiple sap systems for one country itself and before migrating to s4 hana what we did was we upgraded like uh, their migrated systems like multiple clients into one client first and then migration to s4 hana was done then again the third way which will be primary focus of our discussion across this session will be the central finance approach so in this we will not be having doing anything on the source system from the process perspective there will be some technical development which will be required but we will not be having any processes change or any major process change across the source system and then we will have the data replicated to s4 hana central finance replication so yeah one thing which i haven't covered it seems that everywhere we have mentioned sap erp as only but is it possible to or if the business wants can they do sap erp or s4 hana to s4 hana central finance so yes that is also possible let's say that we have multiple sap erps and some entities have already migrated to s4 hana on a separate systems so they can migrate from sap s4 hana sap erps 
and sap business one sap other like non sap erp systems also they can migrate to one separate s4 ana central finance instance as well so it's not only that sap erp or non sap erp can be migrated to central finance even if the business is already using sap s4 also on some of for some of their entities they can also migrate to a separate uh, central finance for the group reporting perspective coming to the central finance how it is usually discussed one is the deployment options which we have already discussed in the earlier slides that central finance in general when people say central finance they will mean that okay they want to have the central finance for the consolidation purpose or the they want to deploy central finance one is it is used in represent second is that in the first slide as i said it's about the landscape transformation like whenever you are implementing central finance you are not using greenfield approach or you are not using upgrade options or brownfield approach rather you are doing a landscape transformation project where you are consolidating the existing systems into a separate landscape for like a to report at the group level or to or to consolidate the financial data from across erps be it sap non sap and then on top of that you can perform especially like the group reporting and uh, bpcs are getting popular on central finance okay this part we have already covered so maybe if you have any doubt you can ask or the slides will be provided so you can access if you have any questions you can use the lms portal for uh asking even if you get any questions at later point after the session okay these are the same benefits like sap central finance ideally it uses the same all the functionalities which are provided by sap s4 hana so in a faster way like you reduce the time required to implement and then you get the benefit like almost quite faster than what you will get with the s4 hana implementation you will have all the central processes executed from one single system which will save lot of time which will like consolidate your shared services across systems like shared services from multiple different vendors multiple different geographies to one system which will reduce issues which will like i have seen one of my previous client they have like uh, had multiple issues with the vendor relation or stakeholder management so with central finance all the uh, when they executed the central payments those issues were also like reduced because for one if they have same vendor which you are dealing with multiple entities then you can pay them in a single time rather than paying part payments from multiple different shared service centers or multiple different processes so this processes not only help in getting your shared services uh straight rather it also helps in your stakeholder management and happy vendors and customers also like one additional benefit from central finance is that you have once you have all your data migrated at one single place financial data and then at later point if you want to migrate to s4 hana like the full fledged s4 hana it provides a non disruptive way like all your financial data source system processes are already being reported and then you can connect to s4 hana separately once the implementation is done and then that new instance of s4 hana you can connect to the cfin system so your s4 hana migration post that will go flawless so central finance is considered as one of the non most non disruptive way to pave the path for central finance uh, s4 hana implementation okay coming to further benefits of central finance why why any business like this will be mostly help you if you are preparing the poc for or if you want to pitch for any central finance project or for how to convince to businesses like why they should use central finance or you want to understand what led to a business to decide whether they want to move ahead with the uh, central finance to so group reporting we have already covered and one is that this can be almost kind of any business model any system it can be used for implementing in a very faster way so let's say that if there is an emerger and one new company code has 
been acquired by the group so for that also you don't need to have the like complete s4 or the upgrade project to have the transform the data into your or the systems into your existing erp systems what you need to do is if they are using a cp system you can directly connect via slt and real time replic replication will be started if you they are using non scp system you can use cnity or to have the data in the staging tables and then from that you can uh, get the data financial data for reporting in central finance system again once you have the replicated you will have the real time data and on top of that you can perform planning as well as group reporting again most of you would be aware about analysis for office which is very user friendly and in kinds of you get the data in the excel format so business user especially who are not much aware of the uh, from the technology perspective they have been habituated with the microsoft excel because all the data is kind of on their fingertips so you can get the data using afo analysis for office directly from ac docker and based on the custom reports to in excel format and based on that uh, users can modify the parameters in real time so it's kind of on the fly customizing by business users not the consultant and means consultants also can do but business users also can modify the reports as per their requirement using afo and it will be like a blessing for them to prepare the reports and analyze and even they can do the drill down to source documents using afo afo reports and it will be pretty much they will be self sufficient for any preparing any reports and all can there will be multiple central processes which can execute like dunning central payments etc which you can do directly central payment is nothing but currently each system will be doing their payments separately with central payment you can consolidate all the vendor payments and you can do it in one go directly from central finance systems for the data which is already replicated into central finance system these parts we have already covered so these are some statistics how central finance helped businesses across and then you can see that businesses earlier who were having challenges in complying with the regulatory re requirement they did so with ease after central financing inclusion and for cross entity financial statement there was a huge improvement for them and as i said like the central finance implementation is quite faster than the traditional erp implementation or s4 hana implementation and you can even start the replication quite faster like i will not give any specific time because it will depend upon project to project complexity to complexity and how much they can fit it into the standard approach of central finance and then but yes you can have at least three times faster than the uh, central finance uh, normal s4 hana finance implementation so i think yes at someone asked like how will we have the central finance helping on the group reporting like uh, if they have gl1 gl2 into like they will have a separate chart of account into each system and since we'll be consolidating all the chart of accounts from multiple erp systems or even non erp system into one chart of account into central finance system so it will be having uh, group reporting it will help so if i need to explain let me let's say it is erp1 all this they want to migrate to a single gl so in central finance they want that this data should be coming to a, cent a single system so like a, this is their individual chart of accounts which they are using multi different naming convention and in central finance it will have like one chart of account so what will happen is let's say that uh, i will say local chart of account central finance your chart of account will be in central finance you have let's say you are using a group chart of account so what will you do is that will map lcoa l1 and then you will have your company code as well so let's say that in your source chart of account your company code one they are using and in central finance you will map it similar to chart of account which will be your group chart of account then 
what will be your gl account in central finance and the company code which you have used in central finance so it can be see fin one so similar to that you will have mapping for all the objects which you are using in central finance systems so mapping part will cover how the mapping will be done but this will be a sample mapping if you are having chart of account payment terms like there will be a lot of mappings even at for any in fact any uh, value field which any field which you have in the source erp you can map to central finance whether if you want to have the same values in uh, central finance if you want to have different values so you can map it uh, you will have the choice to uh, configure how you want the mapping to be done the, as we said we can have in a similar way we can if there is any new company code added we will map their systems company code and other things to uh, central finance system and then we can uh, use it okay i think most of this parts have already covered if you have any doubt you can you know in the lms okay so let's say that if you have implemented the central finance system so uh, with the central payment so there will be again this will be covering when we cover the central payment uh, lecture but to give you an idea let's say that if you have implemented the central payment so as soon as you push the open items it will be marked as technically cleared in the source system so in that your payment status will not go back to source once it is paid it will be marked once the open item is posted it will be marked as technically cleared and all the payment related like open item or how much payable is pending that you have to check from the central finance system itself hey guys just a quick info zantic offers training for scb s4 hana central finance this course instructs professionals on how to optimize financial processes streamline accounting and reporting improve data quality and support budgeting and forecasting Thousands have already used this program to advance their SAP careers. Like those who have shared their success stories on Zarentex YouTube channel, their testimonials demonstrate how this course can boost SAP skills. In just a few weeks, you can gain the knowledge needed to leverage SAP S4 HANA Central Finance. This can open doors to new jobs, opportunity, or help you excel in your current role. The Zarentech SAP Central Finance training distills a complex topic into a clear insights and actionable skills. Visit the link below to learn more about Zarentech's SAP S4 HANA Central Finance course. Getting started now is the smart first step for Let's say that you have multiple systems involved here. ECC 1, 2, 3 systems, let's say Oracle or it can be let's say SAP Business 1. Or your database can be as long like in it can be excel as well so no need to have any erp you can directly use excel as a database also and you want to migrate your data to cfin so for brownfield implementation uh, or greenfield implementation implementation you will go from ecc you will transfer this system itself to a s4 hana or any other erp in this case you are using the businesses business process as it is you are not changing anything whatever you are doing on the, your existing ERPs. Rather, your agenda is to first transfer only the financial data for reporting purposes or to even to follow up the add-on processes onto central finance system. And then on top of that, at later point of time, you may choose to convert to S4 HANA separately. So this will be kind of you're not doing any greenfield implementation on your existing ERPs or you are not transferring your business processes rather what you are doing is you are just using the existing processes and the existing system setup to transform your landscape structure reporting to a new reporting structure or a new consolidation tool and then on top of that you can choose to like uh, down the time on the for the longer term you can choose to migrate to s4 hana without disrupting even this reporting structure let's say that currently you have connected ecc to central finance system and then one of the erp or one of the countries they choose to migrate to s4 hana either using a green plate approach freshly to s4 hana or a system upgrade to s4 hana then what you will do is your 
system connections to shift central finance will remain exactly as it is from other systems for only this system which has been updated to s4 hana or any other erp for that matter it can be connected seamlessly to the central finance system without hampering the reporting structure and just with a click of button your data will start replicating to uh, this new structure in the central finance system or even you can implement and implementing to a separate s4 hana system you can choose to implement this ECC or upgrade this ECC to in the central finance system because since central finance will be based on your S4 HANA box. So you will have S4 HANA in that you will implement the Stephen business function. So this will be just required for your central finance. So on top of that, if you purchase the S4 HANA license like logistic license and others, so full fledged, you can migrate this ECC to this and then you will disconnect the Stephen connection for the real time replication and the data will be readily available in the central finance for the migration. So when you migrate from ECC to S4 HANA, either in the separate instance of S4 HANA or in the same instance as central finance. So that will be your greenfield or brownfield project. But this ECC to central finance will be your landscape transformation project. OK, so our question was like whether it will be a project for a greenfield implementation, brownfield implementation or what will be the nature of project if you are going for a central finance project. So we are explaining that if it will be like this will not be any directly any greenfield or brownfield implementation, even though it will be a fresh. So this will not be a fresh implementation. It will, not, it will be a fresh implementation, but not a greenfield or brownfield, but it will be a landscape transformation project. Again, CFIN is one of the huge cases of landscape transformation, like landscape transformation does not equal to CFIN. Rather, CFIN is one of the huge cases where when the business chooses to go for the landscape transformation. So what they are doing is so ECC to S4 HANA they can migrate. So this will be their greenfield or brownfield and then that connection they can choose to go with the CFIN whenever they are done or when they can directly choose any of the existing ERPs which they are currently working on and they can implement central finance with the real time replication and the, their data will be readily available. So this will be landscape transformation project and when they choose to go from ECC to S4 HANA either on separate instance or on the instance same as central finance. So that will be their uh, greenfield or brownfield project as per the strategy, IT strategy for them. Is my screen visible now? So today we'll be focusing with the benefits of central finance, how central finance will again benefit the business as well as alternatives, like what are the alternatives available in market currently for central finance and how it is com how it compares with the uh, other existing solutions. So today we'll be discussing in little bit in detail about how each of the benefits that we discussed in summary help will be helping the business. So one is that legal entities does business in different sectors. Like uh, when you go for any business, if you're going for central finance, so it will have a different ERP. So mainly if you like uh, check the market for central finance you see that most of the companies which are using central finance or going for central finance are primarily based in the us regions i'm not saying everything is based in the every country every company which chooses to go for central finance is based in us regions but us is kind of a major market for central finance it's primarily because that in us if you see most of the companies are headquartered in us and they have separate uh, ERP is operating in different region and for the reporting purposes or from the managerial decision making, they need all their data on their fingertips at during the month when they want to make any meet and decision or during the closing time when they want to report as soon as possible before the deadline. So and each entity will have their diverse set of processes and limitation to adopt to a standard process. So which is a major challenge if you're going for S4 HANA transformation as well, like uh, full fledged transformation into consolidating into one system. So for that, when you are going for central finance, you can you will not disrupt the way they are doing the business. Rather, you will migrate the data into one single structure with some modification tweaks as per their like local business requirement. You can do the uh, separate ledger for local reporting, but majorly you will be able to simplify their processes or the data into a one common structure across regions or across ERPs 
or even the manual uploads of the files one is next we'll talk about intercompany reconciliation again intercompany reconciliation is one of the key challenges when we go look for any project or any for any big companies intercompany reconciliation and like the manual different manual work is quite quite a lot in the intercompany reconciliation or icmr processes so for this central finance have a separate like you can use the icmr solution on top of the central finance data to reconcile the data at intercompany level and again this will reduce a lot of manual work for them as well as uh, the time taken during the process again will be discussed in details about the other benefits so again coming to fast closing is the financial closing cockpit which is already implemented in the you can use with the central finance as well it is part of the s4 hana suite so with that once all the data is replicated to central finance you can use the financial closing cockpit to organize the closing tasks and then based on that uh, you can perform the closing and one more thing here is like let's say that uh, with 2021 version the one upgrade came to, let's say that you you have posted one lakh document and not all the documents are replicated into central finance in the real time there are some errors due to which like let's say 1% or let's say 50 documents are not posted so you can make a temporary posting as well so that configuration we will discuss in detail once we go have the system ready so you can post those temporary posting to account for those balances have an effective like to mismatch without any manual effort otherwise earlier what used to happen before 2021 version is that you need to manually uh, repost a manual entry to account for the differences for the documents which has not been replicated or which has not come through in the uh, central finance as well then cash flow management when we have multiple fiori apps which read your open accounts from bank related accounts or if you have the open ap or open items like if you have choose to activate central payment you can use this cash flow management for your liquidity for cost and all also because if you have even not implemented the central payment so then the your clearing status will be replicated based on when the you are posting the documents so for which sap has given a functionality for clearing management a clearing transfer activation so if you choose to activate the clearing transfer or if you the your company chooses to activate the clearing transfer functionality so what will happen is like it's when you post an open item so that open item will be posted in your central finance but when the clearing happens so it will be posted as a separate document on the clearing as well as it will update the uh, clearing information on the original posting as well so that means it will replicate the complete it will uh, mirror the source system but if you don't transfer the uh clearing transfer then it will not transfer the clearing information into the original open item and then you cannot use the cash flow management for liquidity for cash and all because you if the clearing information is not updated you cannot uh use those apps so it completely depends on business what all functionalities they want to use on top of the replication or the consolidation which is basic uh, nature of the central finance that is the bare minimum that you will receive after that you can Uh, on top of that you can build additional functionalities as well in system standardization we have already discussed earlier that when you are using the central finance you can choose to drill down back let's say that if you have posted one document in uh, source system that will get replicated to central finance system and then if you open let's say there will be thousands of document on the central finance system once you open that okay there are some mismatches or you want to check which document from your original ecc system was posted for that particular central finance document so it's it's a single click that once you click on the sender document number you will have the details in the header so if you open the document on the header tab you will be able to see what will be the sender document number sender company code sender fiscal year and logical system as well because logical system is nothing but your original source system from which uh, the document is posted and there is one sap note if you implement that if you double click on it you can directly go back to source system and uh, it will redirect via rfc to the source system and you can open the uh, document in the, it will show the document in the source system as well again this solution you will not find in any other consolidation tool plus additionally this you can use only if you have uh, like you are using ecc system as your source system it will not be used it will not be available for sap business one or any other non sap systems uh, 
such as Oracle or Workday. So profitability analysis, again, this is one of the key features or key benefits when we implement central finance. Uh, and so let uh, there will be multiple ERP system or non ERP systems which will be having their own custom set of profitability system will be using either costing based some will be using accounting based and they will not be updated with the new features which are available in the central finance or the latest version of Esferana finance with central finance you can activate copa which sap recommends account based copa only currently so you can activate the margin accounting or uh, account based copa and then on top of that you will have the latest profitability reports available also on your fingertips uh, once the data is replicated again this will be a completely new implementation for profitability analysis in the uh, central finance it will be based you can do use the value fields or the existing designs from your uh, source system to map in the central finance system but you need to implement it freshly uh, to achieve the full potential of like how the copa works so basically this copa configuration will uh, more or less uh, remain same as the new copa settings it can fetch the data based on the uh, existing data sets from the source postings again this will also discuss more when we go on the config and reporting lectures this reconciliation refer effort is like reduced almost to zero when you are on central finance and versus csa so for each of the modules like uh, either for when you are what uh, so let me first go back to what all you can replicate using central finance so central finance you can replicate either accounting documents your co documents and cost objects so these three will be replicated as part of your central finance structure via aif and slt other master data objects those will be replicated let's say customer vendor gl those will be replicated either via idoc or via mdg whichever solution the company uh, or the client chooses to implement for their master data solution but this three it will always be based on yours it will be coming from central finance you can use even additional objects to copy the data via slt it can be like let's say that if you want your sales order you can implement uh, choose to replicate uh, vbrk or sales related table as well but these three are part of your central finance solution which will be by default available for reporting and on top of that you will have multiple reports for reconciliation so one will be your document comparison report so you, which you can use to compare the how many documents have been posted in source system how many documents have come through in the central finance system and how many are in pending error and how many did not even trigger the replication so there can be some cases where based on some filters you have choose to not replicate some documents or not replicate some of the company codes not replicate you can give any filter based on the requirement what you choose what you want to replicate what you don't want to replicate so that filter you will be setting in the slt not you as a sap uh, slt consultant you will give the filter and they will set the filters in slt what all data should be triggered uh, for replication so once the replication is there you can directly compare those reports it can like the standard which SAP provide is document comparison number comparison report balance comparison report and the line item like which are have been posted or not and then you can like on top of that you can build your own customization also if uh, there is any additional parameters on which you want to uh, report in budgeting and planning on top of like s4 data central finance data you can you choose to implement SAP BPC and you will be able to take all the benefits at consolidated level for centralized planning so again this will be an add-on functionality so you don't need to implement the full s4 ana you can use the central finance instance for your bpc purposes again yes mergers and acquisition yes this is one of the key benefits why for which many companies choose to implement central finance uh, any questions till now before we go to this okay i will take silence as no questions We'll go with mergers and equations. So what happens is for any company when they like uh, it is almost impossible to have a fixed set of system because they will keep on adding new entities. They will keep on like doing demergers from the existing entities. They will be 
merging with each other entities they, or there can be a case where they will be buying a new entities either a full stake or partial stake so for any big entities with multiple erp system the scope of the system or their systems will keep on changing and each time if they choose to implement a new system for their new entities or if they choose to uh, merge their system into their existing erp system that will be very much time taking and it will be a complex process as well as it may not be that much cost efficient for them because it can be aligned with their temporary goal or let's say that if they buy a new comp entity and then after some time again they sell a new different entity so they will have to keep one project for implementing the their existing process into the new erp or their existing erp on which they are operating and once if they sell any other entity again it will be a similar project for removing that uh, entity from their systems so what central finance offers is that whenever a new entity is included in the group or it is removed from the group they will not have any process change or they will it will not the client will not have to uh, put any additional effort into migrating their processes to their existing erp rather what they will do is if they are on the sap system they will use the trigger based approach so that whenever any document is posted on the new entity or out in incoming entity for the group it will be replicated to central finance without any change as per the mappings or as per the gcu or the group chart of account structure in the, uh, created in the central finance similarly if any entity is removed from the group what it will be done is that it will uh, we just need to remove the company code from the replication filters of uh, slt and we are done like no more data will be coming to central finance and similarly you can uh, remove that entity from the legal reporting also because anyway you will not get the data in the central finance for that entity and one more thing this this is also one of the key features which you can utilize one is that let's say there there is one company which is operating into multiple sectors and they have different erp for one legal reporting entity itself so in that case what currently business need they do is they will have some partial data available in one system the other set of data will be available on the other system and they both will be following their own set of let's say chart of account because it's same legal entity so processes are more or less it will be same but the systems or the data structure will be kind of not same and it will not be harmonized between the these two sectors or between the two ERPs and the consolidation effort that goes on for them for the legal reporting entity is quite high because for the same set of account for the same set of balances you will have different structure and then you need to merge it manually the balances then only you will be able to fulfill the re reporting entity requirement so for that what you can do is you can have n is to one mapping in the central finance for company codes so you can map more than one company code so it will be let's say that they are using one company code in one system for same legal entity they are using having a one company code into other system so you can map both those company codes to one company code in central finance and all the data which will be coming will be harmonized automatically into one company code into one legal entities and this like it will have you will have all the data in one go under one company code or one legal entity in the central finance any questions still now okay, so on this sheet you can find the consolidated benefits which we have discussed till now so you can consolidate all the sap and non sap data in one go you can move to cloud if you like if and there are options to move to either cloud on premise or hybrid model so usually what companies do is for their smaller entities they will move to cloud and for the complex entities with customization they will choose to remain on premise but again this will differ from client to client and scenario to scenario uh, which based on the situations or the scenarios what can fit into fit to standard or 
to the standard functionalities offered by SAP and that can be moved to cloud. But there are processes or systems which will have huge customization and uh, moving to standard scenario will not be a wise choice for the company. So in that case, uh, they can go for the uh, on-premise version of the system. Again, as we discussed about mergers and equation, you can have one specific set of process. So where whenever any new company coach is onboarded or decommissioned, you can just choose follow that set of process. So it will save a lot on the cost as well as on the time taken for any onboarding of new entities into the system. Again, instance consolidation we have discussed that once the data is posted in the source ERP are the source system. So whenever I say source ERP, just think of it as the original ERP which the business use using to for their day to day activities to push the data. So that will be your source ERP. And whenever you are implementing any central finance scenario, there will be minimum three systems will be involved. One will be your source system on which the day to day business processes are happening. Second will be your SLT system, which will be used as an kind of intermediary for transferring the data or filtering the data and then transferring it to the central finance system. And the third system will be your uh, S4 ANA central finance instance, where all the data will be consolidated on the real time basis. Again, it is non SAP. You can choose to add non SAP ERPs as well into central finance. OK, so let's get back to one question. So let's say that we have this client which are using multiple ERPs or multiple systems, some on the different versions of SAP or non SAP systems, and they're facing a challenge. To keep the data like sync to the report, so they will come up with a use case like what they want to implement the data to have like their objective is to have all the data at least financial data on one place so that their reporting is structured. So one more thing which like SAP is offering central finance as that once you implement central finance, it has to be like kind of it will pave the way for S4 HANA not it will not stop at central finance rather you will start ripping the benefits of central finance within a very short span of time and then you migrate to S4 HANA in a phased manner so that your processes and things uh, processes are also sync across to for the long term plan as per the IT objectives of the company. So it's not saying that once you implement central finance, you are done with the upgrade and no need to upgrade the existing ERPs or existing processes that still companies will do. But with central finance, uh, you have the accelerated approach for your financial reporting and reaping the benefits of S4 HANA. Okay, this as we discussed, like each client will have multiple ERP systems and which they're currently using as a system of record as well as report. And they will choose to migrate again. It is up to client whether they want to migrate a specific set of business scenario, master data, what all they want to manage by their own on their existing ERPs and what they want to manage centrally by uh, like the shared service central shared service team or like centrally. So this is again up to client to, to client and again it will also depend on the source ERP stakeholders. Let's say that if there are five different SAP's ERPs and four say that OK, they want to implement central finance. One says that uh, central finance with central payment, but other one or two entity, they say that no, I don't want central payment. I just want the consolidation to happen in the central finance, but still I want to keep my processes, the central processes such as central payment, dunning, etc. with them only. They don't want to pass that on to the central team or as part of the central scenarios. Uh, to be done by central finance. So still that can also be done where client chooses to partially activate these central processes such as central payment, dunning, etc. from the central finance and some of the ERPs 
or some of the company codes even not even ERP. Some of the if one ERP has 50 company codes, 40 want to migrate to central uh, with uh, central payments and dunning, they can still do rest and can continue to use the source ERPs for making and their dunning and central payments, etc. Again, there are like few basic prerequisites that must be transferred, such as like cost objects. So in cost objects, you will have all the data from WBS project orders that will be replicated by your cost object mapping framework. Other cost objects such as cost center, etc. That that you can choose to transfer via IDOC or via MDG. Customer vendor again, same process. You can choose to either map it manually or via IDOC or via MDJ. Same goes with uh, GL account as well. Any queries uh, on this topic or till now? Okay, so moving forward to the central finance use cases where it will be used. Uh, post once, let's say that the data is replicated. One is that simplification. So whenever you are using SAP central finance compared to ECC, you will have multiple processes simplified. One user interface that you can move to like Fiery, so it will be like you don't need to have the SAP GUI installed as well. You can use Fiery directly from any of your approved devices. Then you will have business will have ease in decommissioning the systems, interfaces, etc. It will be reduced, so you will have all the uh, reporting your reporting you can do directly from the central finance managerial reporting even you choose copa you can do it directly from the central finance system so processes will be simplified for multiple systems it can be it will be your data will be available on the go now coming to transformation it paves the way for your uh, any organization to have your process transformed because then once you have the central finance implemented your data across the systems like financial data reporting is kind of already on the S4 HANA which is faster and then you can report it directly and then if you choose to migrate to S4 HANA separately or on the CFIN instance then you will not have the risk which earlier used to be that what happens if the migration fails what happens if the transformation fails so those processes will still continue as usual until you have successfully went live in the uh, after upgrade so it not only paves the way for your simplified reporting but it also paves the way for your non disruptive and very less risky transformations for enterprises to upgrade uh, upgrade their digital infrastructure especially on the ERP side. Again, on automation side, if you have are using multiple system, you need to have multiple instances for the same code or same one to operate on. And then on top of that, you need to consolidate the data. So with this, you can automate your reporting as well as if you want to use the group reporting solution or CFO dashboard, you can directly use from the uh, central finance instance. Any questions till now? Let's discuss if we have anything. Anyone, any questions are allocated now? Okay, then let's go back to the last topic of today, which is alternatives to central finance. So what are the like alternatives which are available in the market, but still central finance is one of the popular solutions for consolidation and many of the clients are choosing to go with central finance. So first, like most of these are popular solutions, which I think most of you would be knowing because I guess yeah, most of you are experienced FI consultant. So one or the other time you would have already used or heard about this financial solutions. So Oracle for finances again, as we all know, it's a quite popular consolidation as well as other financial reporting tool as well. But again, these are challenges in connecting to SAP or SAP S4 HANA database. And on top of that, we can't build like a further reporting as seamless as what we are able to do it on the central finance in the unified way. Again, workday financial management, this, can, this is also 
comparatively new solution i would say compared to sap we can still use this but again this is not quite popular tool for consolidation yet coming to hfm again hfm is one of the widely used tools uh, if we see in the market for uh, consolidation in the group report uh, even the reporting legal reporting so hfm i would say is one of the leading reporting solution like which is providing so where like even even though like i have seen some clients which are already migrated to central finance but still they are using hfm for their group reporting partially because on top of that like they have connected their central finance instance to hfm and then they will be using which slowly they need to migrate from hfm to directly using the uh, a4 reports or the reports customized report from uh, central finance or what so uh, let's say what we can say is like let's say there are around 20 25 entities for erp systems for one company and they choose to go with central finance for 15 of their entities so 15 of their entities are directly providing their data to central finance but still there are four or five entities which are reporting not part of the central finance so and they are existing prior to central finance they are using the hfm for their reporting purposes so for that there are two options one is that either you choose to have the 15 for 15 systems you will have the replication active in the central finance you will have all the data readily available for remaining five entities or remaining xyz entities which are not part of the central finance replication either you can choose to upload the data file like the balances file and then you can report it directly from for those 20 entities or 20 erp systems directly from central finance or you can choose to provide the data from central finance to hfm for the 15 entities and for five erps they will continue to be remain connected to hfm in the earlier way and then you can directly report from hfm so even so with central finance you can still use hfm or you can choose to go with central finance uh, for reporting purposes there are both the solutions available uh, for clients to choose and i have seen that yeah most for many clients it's like 50 50 some choose to go ahead with the manual upload file into central finance system for their consolidated reporting and some choose to transfer the like they will disconnect the hfm connection from the source erp which are migrated to central finance and then they will connect central finance instances central finance instance for those company codes which are migrated to central finance and then from hfm uh, they will report to the uh, report for the legal reporting purposes so both ways it's possible again this sap s4 hana i have written as an alternative to uh, central finance so because when so this is like dilemma which every company goes through when they choose to implement whether they want to go for sap central finance they want to because yes if a client is already using sap the chances of going to them of other erp systems are less comparatively less i would say so when they ch- choose to decide like if they are when they are discussing their erp strategy one this is the major dilemma which they face whether they want to go to s4 ana full fledged or they want to activate the central finance component so s4 hana is a full fledged alternative to central finance as well if there are 20 entities which they are operating into multiple system and if the client chooses to migrate fully to central finance uh, s4 hana so then also they will be able to achieve same results or same benefits as what they will be achieving in after implementing the central finance in fact they will achieve bit more on the logistics and other part but from as long as like fun, we are talking from the scope of central finance scenarios so they will be achieving a similar benefit to what they are achieving with central finance in the s4 hana instance also but the problem with s4 hana implementation is that it will be a long running project and any company let's say if this 
there is a entity operating in 20 regions and you say them that okay s for is best but best and it will have all the data handy what central finance will give but and plus it will give additional xyz things also but then when you say okay what will take me six years seven years of time to implement the s for hana fully so even though it will give more benefits but you will it you will have longer time uh, you have to wait before you can reap the benefits of what s for hana can provide so for that the option is that okay we can choose to go to s for hana or we can wait for s for hana but what we can achieve in the meantime while we are migrating our systems full fledged to s for hana so for that you can use sap central finance or you can choose to migrate to s sap central finance so you will be reaping the benefits quite early like as long like even from 4 5 months you can start getting the benefits of central finance consolidation and same in a phased way you can implement more so with central finance you will get the benefits of s4 hana in a shorter span while the client is still going to migrate to other company codes to s4 hana or different entities as per like whatever it and there can be there can be their different erp strategies to uh, migrate to central finance so again this can have multiple number of cases uh, where the client chooses to migrate to s4 hana or they have a competition but yeah there are multiple scenarios uh, which we can discuss here so again if you have any particular scenario in mind which you want to discuss like how it helps or how not we can uh, we can discuss now again net suite again net suite is also one of the cloud application it's owned by oracle only so it is part of oracle solutions itself and this is also cloud based so you need to upload the data or transfer the data to net suite financial management tool and then you can use the uh, reporting or like consolidating the data but yes primarily what the dilemma which company faces during central finances whether they want to go for central finance or they want to go for s4 hana whether they should keep the reporting on hfm whether they should migrate the reporting like group reporting to central finance especially when they are not migrating all their sap instances on central finance in one go or if it is not part of their strategy to migrate all the uh, central finance data in one go hey guys just a quick info zantic offers training for SCB S4 HANA Central Finance. This course instructs professionals on how to optimize financial processes, streamline accounting and reporting, improve data quality, and support budgeting and forecasting. Thousands have already used this program to advance their SAP careers. Like those who have shared their success stories on Zarentech's YouTube channel, their testimonials demonstrate how this course can boost SAP skills. In just a few weeks, you can gain the knowledge needed to leverage SAP S4 HANA Central Finance. This can open doors to new jobs, opportunity, or help you excel in your current role. The Zarentic SAP Central Finance training distills a complex topic into a clear insights and actionable skills. Visit the link below to learn more about Zarentic's SAP S4 HANA Central Finance course. Getting started now is the smart first step before we start for the today so family today we'll start with the cfn architecture house how cfn is structured and uh, we'll check in cfn and source system what are the settings to activate the central finance and how do we know whether the all the technical prerequisites have been completed and we can start with the central finance from functional side as if i can select or not so yes let's have any questions from the previous sessions yeah, let me share my screen so so today we'll be discussing about the central finance architecture and then we'll discuss about the implementation methodology which is the default one which is <clears throat> now recommended by sap is sap activate so we'll discuss how we can have the sap activate under our sap cfin implementation how we can use it so coming to like in continuation of what we discussed yesterday about how the central finance is structured 
so here we will have at least three systems involved one will be your source system which can be your sap erp sap non erp in sap erp also you can you will have a different variety like different versions of the sap erp or even the different product suits from sap like sap business one or sap business by design or even this sap erp as source system can be your s4 as well so all these three systems all the SAP related systems which will follow the SLT approach will have a database trigger approach like database trigger. You, what is mean by database trigger is whenever there will be any changes in the database. So that will trigger the replication. So it will not be a kind of extract and transform method for data uh, replication that it will not in the periodic job. Rather it will be a real time that whenever any change is happening it uh, SLT will trigger the data to staging tables or you can say the holding tables where the data will be stored temporarily means temporarily as in from there it will pick to the slt and slt will then transfer it to the uh, central finance system so yeah but whenever there will be a non sap system involved in this case let's say your oracle or sap business one so in those cases there will not be a direct uh, uh, connection in the real time because uh, due to legal reasons as well as the like separation of responsibility like SAP is not allowed to directly design as per the trigger approach the approach which is using for SAP. So for that there will be a technical development which will trigger the data or on a periodic basis or on real time basis as per their design to the staging tables which will be offered by SAP and from staging tables as a consultant our job will start to pick the data from there like the central finance design will start so from there in the data will be picked by sap slt in the structure which has to be posted into sap central finance so in that case based on the structure again and the data will come to <coughs> central finance accounting interface and it will be reposted into central finance. So yeah, one more difference with central finance compared to other similar solution is in other solutions, the database to database copy happens like the similar data is copied to uh, the consolidation tools. But in case of central finance, the same data is not copied, rather it is reposted. So one document is posted in source system or in different ERP as per their structure. So in, from that, the data is copied to staging tables in a format which can be used that uh, the fields or the data from that format can be used to repost that particular document into central finance rather than copying at the database level so how that happens that will check in detail but this is your overall structure so what happens is let's say that you want to post an accounting document so it will pick the header related information from BKPF table. It will pick the item related information from uh, your BSEC table and it will copy that particular data into the staging table for central finance, which will be your CFIN ACCHD table and CFIN ACCIT table, which will store the item information. And from that, based on your SAP MDG settings, like your SAP MDG can be yes. It will perform the business mapping so again. SAP MDG will have separate instance. It can be on either central finance system, source system, or uh, separately installed. But but what uh, SAP MDG does is it will provide the business mapping as well as it will copy the it will create the master data as per the source harmonized data. So once the data is in the accounting interface it will come to business mapping it will pick the data as per the central finance design or you, you can say the unified data model which has been uh, created into sap central finance and then it will try to post using the accounting interfaces which has been created in central finance or which, which by default is in the central finance so but in, let's say that it goes into any error so what will happen is that you it will not come back at this level that you need to re trigger those documents when there is whenever there is any error or whenever there is any 
issues in posting the document and issue can be multiple. Let's say that you are posting and they have created a new GL account in source system and they have posted a new document. And meanwhile, SAP MDG has not picked up the creation of that particular new GL or any changes on that particular any GL in the source account. And so when and the, the posted document which comes into your central finance accounting interface first. So in that case, what will happen is the data will go to AIF as error. So in this, whenever you will search by the reference document, you can find that one particular document is pending replication. And you can see the reason that why it is pending replication. It can be either master data, it can be configuration issue, or it can be any any reason even it can be technical reason then also that particular now uh, error you can see in the AIF and again this AIF you can configure you can customize as well as you can have functions also to automate the uh, automate the error resolution. So once you have fixed the error it will come to accounting interface and then the document will be posted using the uh, like the accounting interface function module like function module to post the account and a new document will be reposted into central finance. Same goes for non SAP ERP also, especially like Oracle. Let's say they follow a complete different structure only. They don't have GL account similar to the structure what we define in our SAP ERP. They have different key fields which will identify a GL account or even the way in which posting happens is quite different from how it the posting structure is in the source system uh, in the SAP ERP. So here, what will happen is that in this from this database tables, uh, from the database tables or wherever the data is stored for those particular ERPs, from there the data will be picked. It will be harmonized in a via technical development to pick the fields which will be as per the posting interface of the or you can say the as per the structure in CIFIN ACC HD tables and CIFIN ACC IT tables. So no need to remember those tables by name, but we need to understand there are some holding tables which will have the accounting document templates. You can say kind of that it will hold the data for posting into central finance. Any questions on the way it's being posted? CIFIN underscore ACC HD will store your header data in this case only. So let me I will reset. So currently, like the systems are not set up completely. So that's the reason I'm not able to show it. So but yeah, I can show the implementation uh, like how the configurations are there. OK, so this is the source system. You are able to see the SAP screen, right? Yeah, yeah. So first we need to check whether central finance is implemented like the technical function for like FIN CF is implemented in the source system or not. So for that, if you go to CFIN IMG. In source system, you will find only one configuration. It is the general setting. So if you are able to see this screen, that means the business function for central finance is implemented. So in this, you will have only one config again. Similar to like what let's say this is my central finance system. If I go here. So here we will find the settings for both source system as well as the central finance system. So here you can find settings for both source system as well as central finance system. The reason is that S4 HANA system. It can be used as both your source system as well as central finance system. So that's the reason we'll find. But currently if you are using. Central finance for target system like your it's your Primarily, the Furana system on which you are replicating the data, then no need to maintain the data here in the source system settings. Only we will focus on the configs on the target system. Okay, coming back to source system. So here again, let's say that if you want to check like what are the packages, like how it has been implemented and what are the tables, etc., which will be generated as part of your central finance. Well, like once the CFIN module is implemented in the like activated in the source system rather than implemented. So let me. This package name I will 
I will give you one package name so there we can see whether what are the T codes or what are the T codes, what are the uh, tables activated as part of the central finance. So again, if you see in this. If in a CCHT table, so currently you won't find any entries. But once the settings are replicated like the once the SLT. Your S4 system, central finance system, as well as source systems are connected. So whenever there will be any change, it will copy the data. Like whenever, let's say, you create any accounting document, then it will copy, create that an entry into this particular table as well. So it will not be only two tables. There will be more tables also, but primarily this will be the two tables. Uh, if you configure any additional parameters, it will store in the CFIN APP table. So if there are any additional structure, let's say you configure any particular extra fields which you need to copy into your central finance system, so then it will up append to this table. Similarly, for CU also, you will find uh, the corresponding tables and same goes for uh, your cost objects as well. OK, and then coming to I think. OK, SLT. OK, so even if let's say that you want to go on this SLT, so SLT will have. Uh, SLT you can have on like. Three different systems as well. So this is the particular structure, but how like. This does not tell where will be my systems standing like let's say that we need three systems, separate systems, but we can have source here. This SLT is my we can say kind of middleware which is interfacing between my source ERP <coughs> and central finance. So this SLT system it can be on source ERP as well. Even on SEC you can implement this SLT. You can have SLT as a separate system as well. And you can have SLT on your central finance system as well. So currently what we'll be using will be on the central finance, but there are all the three options which will be available to client for the SLT system. So let's discuss about what will be the benefits and drawbacks if you choose to implement on source ERP or separately or on the central finance system. So let's say that if you have implemented it on the source system, then what will be the benefit is that it will have the data directly like if you don't have it, if you have it separately, then you need to send the data via RFC or via connection approach, which can cause issues or sometimes the connection is unstable, then your replication will be delayed means it will not log it to the central finance table. So if you implement on source ERP, it will SLT will have access to all the table data from the source ERP and the data movement from your source ERP to SLT will be quite faster. But same again as the same it will be a challenge also because you will have multiple ERPs connected for central finance system and SLT will have on only one particular source system. Let's say that you choose the ERP with highest number of data or the largest data volume. So that can be one use case where you implement SLT on source system because if there are multiple big ERPs and you implement it on source system, then the other ERP needs to send data to SLT on different source ERP and again it will have the same challenge for database replication. Again coming to like uh, implementing on. Uh, this. Uh, yes, it will differ from like client to client. They will have uh, different choices, but it is preferred that either you keep it as standalone or on the central finance. But better to keep it standalone because like if you have keeping it on the central finance system also because it's for because the CCC mostly will have uh, on your ECC system like the source ER page like still there are use cases where client is on S4 HANA and is still implementing central finance to connect other ERPs. But in most of the cases it will be ECC which will be comparatively slower compared to your S4 HANA which is uh, having okay. the central finance instance and SLT. So if if you have using it separately, then it will have like uh, no system performance causing due to your S4 HANA. Or if there is some load on your CFIN system, so preferred ways to have it separately standalone 
or on the central finance system uh, yes it multiple okay. source system can be implemented like even if it is on the source system so okay. but yes like the structure like the connecting methodology will be same whether on the each of the system but if it is an sap let's say that you are integrating five erps for central yeah. finance and you choose yeah. you can implement slt on only one so let's yeah. say if the if the data volume is let's say 80 percent on the one erp and there's 20 percent coming from the other four erps yeah. then still you can consider that okay on the highest erp i will uh, have the sap implemented so yeah. then so that 80 percent will not require any connection and everything will be flow like uh, almost instantaneously for 20 percent okay. you can choose to connect by rfc but because even if you are connecting uh, separately also then also you are sending the data via the system connection only or rfc rfc only or again uh, SLT standalone, yes, it will be like having a separate system, its own memory, so that and it will be connected via both central finance and uh, source systems. So only disadvantage is that SLT will not have access to data from any of the systems directly. So whenever you need to fetch any additional data, you need to configure additional setting or have the custom development. So that is one disadvantage if you are using SLT as a standalone system. So let's say that if you're using it on source system, you need to include additional fields. So you don't need to configure the replication strategy for that particular field. Directly the system will have access to the SLT. SLT will have access to the data if it is on the source system. Same thing, let's say we implement it on S4HANA system. And then if there is any, so if you're implementing in S4HANA or the central finance instance, so SLT will be and as central finance they both will share the same database so whatever is stored in the central finance it will have seamless access slt will have seamless access to that also so if you are if you want to include any additional field or if you want to modify the reports like the replication or the replication strategy from erp to this the connection will not be required and it can directly like you can fetch using the uh, queries slt consultants can configure it so those like it's each uh, option have its own drawbacks and advantages and based on the business cases we need to decide how it should be configured how slt should how slt system should be set up So primarily you can see your SLT configuration mostly like this is kind of an LTRC cockpit. You can see everything that has been configured for your in this particular. It is kind of it gives an overview of all the configuration. So again, SLT will have multiple use cases and central finance connection is one of the use cases. So it's not like that SLT will use be used only for central finance. Central finance is one of the use cases for SLT like so whenever a connection is there or not, you need to check. There should be at least one, like here it can be n number of systems, connection for n number of purposes. But what you need to check is there should be at least one scenario with the central finance. It is required. If it is not there, that means your connection is not yet set up. At least the RFC is not yet set up. So once this is there, that means you can be sure that, okay, we have the connection ready between the central finance system and slt and the source system so even if we click on this in this slt configuration this will not be done from like us as a fi consultant or from the cfin consultants this configuration will be done by technical team again if you see here so this here you can see 
what are the settings which will be like how the source system what are the source system and what are the target systems so here you can see this configuration this is my this will be the source system to which from which the data will be flowing for this connection if you need different systems like if there will be let's say five source systems so here will be five different connections for that particular uh, using the same like central finance instance so you can see as many systems are connected there will be at least those many configs on the previous screen using for the central finance scenario again here you can configure again it is to optimize the memory based on memory you can configure how many parallel jobs you want how many jobs you want like reserved for initial load so again here if you see target system this is a cnd 400 so this probably again as i said like the systems are not yet set up but here this will be your s4 hana system so it, it will be same whatever it is here the same system which you are using should be on this one so let's say that in this particular configuration could be that this system is used separately as a slt system only so in that case source system will send data to here id8 from id8 data will come and it will be sent to this particular system so this will be case for the standalone slt system is it clear again coming to this this will be a very like important screen for us as a finance consultant to understand what all data loads are loaded so let's say you want to replicate uh, accounting documents co documents cost objects even and even avl like which are not part of central finance but it is part of the central scenarios so in that case you should be able to see all the tables which have been which are currently being replicated so if you are using uh, replicating accounting documents you should be able to see here uh, see in a cca3 table if you are replicating cost objects as well you should be able to see a ufk table here same goes for controlling if you are replicating controlling you should be able to see the cobk tables here so if you are not able to see here that means your slt is not yet configured to replicate like you can't start your configuration even to start replicating the document like it will not log the data uh, still any questions from here again here this will be your there will be some staging tables even log, logging tables even for uh, slt also which will store what will be your data for what are the data which has yet to be processed which has been processed otherwise system will not know it said so that the data is stored in your cfin acc hd table but how will slt know whether the it has pull, uh, triggered that document to uh, central finance or not so for that there are some logging tables in slt so it will like uh, let's say 10 documents are posted so all the 10 documents will come and when it has been sent to central finance it will keep deleting so it will be logging table only for the pending documents or you can say holding tables uh, for the pending documents again these settings uh, it's good to know for us because then we can explain the solution we can explain how it's happening but configure or even we need to tell technical consultant if there are any filter which we need to provide to them again coming to here whenever you see any objects configured if you click on data provisioning you will be able to see how the data is how 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 are the filters set up again so this ltrc is the cockpit where you can get the overview in ltrs you can 
see how this uh, you can like give filters and all. Again, once the system is configured, you can view the settings, but please do not change these settings. Otherwise, it will impact the replication. This has not been configured yet, so coming to this. So in this configuration, what we'll do additionally is let's say that there are 50 company codes for a particular source system which you have connected, but you don't want to implement central finance for all the 50 company codes. You want to implement only for uh, 15, 20, and you want that SLT should pick only the data for those. 10, 15 company codes or whatever is defined as per the scope. So those settings and all like those filters and all in SLT you will provide here for this particular. So it can be company code. It can be any parameters from these tables. It is not only that you, you can maintain only company code. You can maintain business transactions. You can maintain any particular document type like document wise usually will not have any requirement, but if they are posting anything for adjustment and all which client want to avoid, even you can include that as well. So basically, this particular filters here and you need uh, SLT consultants will configure with the filter which you provide or which business you need to provide after discussing with business. What will be the scoop for replication from the SLT side? So even though the data is stored in CFNC CHD and all and if the filters here, it does not miss the criteria. It will not replicate to central finance. Any questions still here? Again, like how the source systems like you can see what will need to be done in the source system or the source ERPs to prepare it for the central finance so that you can start working on the functional configurations or you can start working on preparing data for that particular source systems. So your source system can be any one of this source system. It can be your SAP S4 HANA. So if it is a CPS for HANA, you are using a source system. There is no action required from any consultants, like no action required from anyone, either technical or functional for the system readiness from the technical perspectives. It has all the components already built in. Once you activate the central finance business functions, uh, you can start with your configuration straight away, like the settings or whatever you need to do from the central finance integration implementation perspective. If it is ECC 6.0 or above, then SAP will provide some notes and which you can get it implemented with help of your basis consultant. And once those notes are implemented, you can you know, go ahead with the configuration. So I've also included the SAP note. So this will keep on updating. So it's better to check whenever you are um, implementing, better to check this note for updated notes information, which will need to be implemented in the source system. So because as with each upgrade or each functionality or let's say even with uh, some notes, they will keep on adding to fix the bugs or to include a new design. So all the notes information you will find on this particular note. What are the notes which will need to implement? So let's say that if you're you are using the SAP ERP, which are out of support by the SAP system and you still want to uh, implement central finance. The business doesn't want to upgrade first to the ECC 6 or above, rather, they want to implement central finance on the same instances of the ERP system. So, in this case, what they will do is uh, you need to raise a consulting note to the SAP team. They will provide some additional SAP notes, which uh, you will be working with your basis team, and mostly it will be basis and Technical only who will be working on those to for the system readiness, but we should be aware that okay, what will be the process that needs to be followed uh, for the system readiness by uh, for, to in, start implementing the central finance or we start with the functional configuration for central finance. Again, even if you are using SAP ERP and you are using SAP business by design or SAP business one, so these two are. Very small softwares by SAP, which are used by small businesses only, like which have lower transaction volume and not much data. So SAP has not provided any additional 
settings which you can set that will directly replicate the data on the real time basis similar to const, uh, what is we are discussed in the above third scenario above three scenario so sap treats this sap business by design sap business one as non sap erp only as long as central finance is considered so it will follow the same approach as a new non sap erp will follow to integrate so for this what you need to do is in this also the data will come from slt only but you will not pick the data directly based on the database trigger approach so data will come like whenever data is posted it will be logged from the custom development either it will update on real time or it may be that it is picking the data on time to time basis let's say a job is running to fetch the data couple of minutes couple of let's say couple of hours again it is purely a business decision how they choose to decide when the data gets uh, into the logging tables and our job or you can say that the sap central finance job starts once the data is there in this staging tables and once it is in the staging table from the bapi we will uh, fetch it into the central finance system and it will after that after staging table the process will be same for all this so there will be no difference as long as the process of posting is considered once the data is in the staging tables again in this like what will happen is that if you if sap gets involved into at this phase only to fetch the data that will create a, even the legal risk for client because then if something wrong happens there will be a, like there will not be a segregation of responsibility what how much sap has uh, done or how much like the it will be a blame game for both the stakeholders so for that only uh, the like sap or has to avoid that it's a very like clear rules and responsibility defined what needs to be taken care by uh, the third party or even the dgrps or what needs to be done by the sap side so like customers are like if it uh, let's a non sap erp stakeholders you can say in this case customer he is responsible for transferring the data from these non erp systems or from business by design and business one to slt layer and once it comes into slt layer it is like this interface will receive and from there on sap will take the job and then again this will be coming to your aif tool as usual compared like a uh, same as what we discussed earlier Till now, any queries? Okay. So coming to like bit more details of how the transfer happens if there is a third-party system involved. So here you will have your sort system. Here will be the transfer program. So this transfer program will be created by the third part. I mean third party, as in your the customer will be responsible to get this program created as per the structure or as per the database design which is given by SAP. Again, for like this will also keep changing, and SAP will update this particular note uh, whenever there is any change in the structure or whenever there is any change in the design or if there is a new enhancement added. So they will update this particular note 2462424. So in this, you can get the updated information on the transfer. But overall, until transfer program, customer takes care of the. Uh, this program and how the data is transferred. So if anything is wrong here in the transfer program, then the data will be wrong. But this part has to be fixed by customer or the vendors which are using that non ERP. So till, till here, we are not responsible or we are not responsible for the design. We will only give the structure how we need the data in what, for, what format. The quality of data or data extraction, this has to be taken care by customer. So here, they will have the data extraction. They will do themselves the quality check and in parallel structure mapping will happen here. 
again here also the data will be segregated into two part one is that real time and uh, real time data which will start once the initial load is completed and the second part will be your real time replication and the for initial load you need to follow the same approach that the data uh, they need to prepare the balances or line items like till when they want to post and they need to transfer it like once as part of the bad job or maybe manual file also how the data needs to be posted whether at balance level whether at line item level like uh, if we go to sap So if you go here, we maintain here how we want the data to like till what date we want the data to replicate from like when like when you mark this initial load as finished and you give the date like from when like you will maintain the. This balance here document here, so we'll come to explain this table in a bit more detail uh, once we start the config, but here what you need to understand is that in this table we maintain from when we want the data to happen like initial load and from when we want the real time replication to start. But in, when we are using any third party ERPs, there is no such settings which we can maintain so that the system will pick automatically from when real time replication has to happen and from from when you need to start the initial load. So this part has is being taken manually in case of any third party. So this part has to be taken care in the way that they need to transfer the data till a particular date at once. And after that, they, they will start the uh, transfer of real time data on a particular frequency basis, which again, it's up to the client whether they want it as per minute, month wise, or date wise, or particular hour wise, how they want, what will be the frequency of uh, this transfer program. Again, once the program captures the data into the format specified by SAP or some, including some additional data. Or the custom fields, then this transfer layer, which is nothing but SLT, it will perform the mapping. Then it will come to staging tables. So from here, we will have the same process as we had for uh, SAP system. So once this comes to staging tables, this will come to your CFIN interface. So here, usually this programs like the interfaces happen like it does not. It will be done by either magnitude or Synity. These are popular third party tools when uh, this when any third party system is involved to fetch the data after that it will come to aif error so in this aif we can uh, configure all the errors uh, all the error handling scenarios you can say rather and once if there is any error you need to fix if not automatically from here once it comes to here uh, automatically the data will be posted to acidoka I hope everything is clear until now. We will discuss about the. This will be how the data will flow. Now we'll discuss about the SAP activate and how the what will be the project management methodology when we implement uh, SAP central finance. Okay, so usually we'll discuss about this system structure. So what will be the 
landscape so let's say that there will be multiple erps it can be sap non sap s4 business by one or even your excel there can be multiple source of data which usually there will be multiple source of data for which you will have the you want to consolidate the data into central finance so in phase one like usually it will be uh, the approach will be to have it into multiple phases and each phase will have different purpose so in phase one you will take let's say there are 15 erps so you will take one or two erps or based on the data volume you will take few erps for the pilot phase where you will implement central finance on those particular erps and once you see that okay everything is ready then you will go with the iterative approach to to roll out the same solution for the other erps so in this case you will have this one again this phase one can be divided into two part if you are going with the central payment and the central scenarios replication so what will happen is that let's say that you want to implement central payment as well and you have decided to okay i will i have taken four erps for which i want to implement central finance in the pilot phase and again in this you have decided okay i want all the uh, like central payment and other central scenarios activated as well but prerequisite for any central payment is or you have to have the all the data replicated you should have like kind of almost 100 percent replication uh, otherwise let's say if there is any mismatch in the open item let's say 100 open items posted in source system and 10 are in error with the due date but in central payment one you run Thin documents are not yet posted, so the payment will fail, which will again cause issues in your stakeholder management and other lot of delayed payments, fines, penalties. So those will be the challenge once you if you implement everything in one go. So in this again, this is structured into two part. One is activating just the central replication. So you will not activate the central payment in starting only in the starting phase of deployment rather you will implement once your system becomes stable from the replication perspective and once you see that okay my now replications are fine then you activate the central payment and you move all the central scenarios so again this phase one will be divided into two part but again that is up to the client choice whether they want to implement to at one go or if they want to implement it into two part so in this case you will have replication once the in the starting of the replication usually you will face a lot of errors when where the system is not stable or when the you can say that when the system is in hyper care support and if you parallelly start the central payment central dunning you will have issues from the customer communication perspective as well okay so So in this case, yeah, earlier as we all know that because we are working on central uh, finance that earlier SAP, met SAP methodology was recommended by SAP, but now SAP is saying that okay, we need to follow SAP uh, activate methodology for implementation rather than SAP SAP, which is the improved and agile method in which we can implement any SAP project. So this activate is not only recommended for SAP central finance, but rather it is activated uh, recommended for both central or any sap project not only sap s4 hana or sap central finance where sap is recommending okay, whenever you want to implement any project uh, we should activate with the Okay, so coming to SAP activate so as we all know I guess most of us have worked on SAP implementation or the SAP SAP method so this is kind of an next version to SAP activate uh, SAP SAP where the SAP implementation has become kind of more agile in nature compared to A ASAP so where we are focusing on the best of ASAP plus how we can use that to further increase the 
efficiency of any project as well as reduce the timelines under which we implement and how we can continuously improve so it is like combination of already the best practices and standard configuration also rather you can say which has already updated on this uh, rapid dot uh, dot com so where you all will find all the best practice document for sap and then guided configuration again you will find the model company codes and other details where you will have all the basic or the standard sap recommended configuration agile method as it said like you need to like uh, continuously continuous improvement so as you you build on one topic you come back after one sprint and you take that okay what are the improvements needed or what are the things we missed and this simplifies like overall the sap implementation process as again as we discussed earlier that it can be implemented on any any of the sap projects it's not only s4 hana as for HANA specific that we will be implementing this particular SAP S4 uh, on SAP S4 central finance only. It can be used for migration project, even for integration, even for S4 HANA implementation. Or whenever we are dealing with any SAP projects, we can use the uh, SAP activate methodology for implementation. But for our discussion, primarily we'll be focusing today on how we can utilize SAP activate methodology for SAP central finance and what will be the actions required when we what what are the action required in each phase of the SAP, SAP implementation under SAP activate. So before coming to that SAP activate we should know like what are the like major activities which we need to do as part of SAP central finance or SAP central finance implementation which will be required and then we can kind of segregate what will be the activities under which phase. So one will be the high value assessment that we need to do. So before OK, let's and this will be the phases, but coming to that, what will be the activities? So you will have first you need to the high value assessment where what will be the value proposition for client? You will be giving them the central finance demo you, if required you will implement the sap best practices on the test client provided by sap and you will in this phase you will like uh, also decide what will the edge situation for the client what is the to be situation which they want and then once you present all this business case benefits to the higher management then they will come to a conclusion whether they want to go ahead with the SAP implementation or SAP central finance or not. Once they decide to go ahead with the central finance, then in next phase we will have our pilot phase or you can say that POC phase. So under POC phase, we will validate whatever we discussed in the assessment phase that we, whatever we said that what will be the value provision, what will be the business benefit that they will be getting from the uh, central finance implementation that we need to validate in the pilot phase and we'll be designing the blueprinting for master data for transaction data mapping how the settings will be or means how the rather business structure would be into the poc phase and then once we are ready with all this proof of concept like the blueprinting of the master data transaction data mappings etc that what will be the structure reporting structure into central finance both for managerial reporting and for legal reporting then we'll take one or two uh, transactional systems in which we will activate the as a situation for central finance uh, so let's say as we discussed in the earlier slide about the situation that if there are multiple erps we'll take few erps in the first phase we will implement we'll test the functionalities and we will check with will validate with whatever the business proposition or what were the business value we set to clients that they will be getting from this central finance project will validate with them whether are they getting it or not if they want any improvement uh, that part will be we can take it up like uh, as implementation team we need to take it up to further improve as per the client requirement if any so that 
so that's the reason we take it few sample system so that if there is an improvement required we can incorporate those imp improvements at the at that time only and then with the improved design we can uh, go ahead and roll out in the other particular systems then once we have validated with the edge situation then the actual technical implementation will start where you will configure the s4 hana central finance and you will maintain connection and all as we discussed and then for particular uh, erp those systems which you have identified you will be uh, replicating the data on real time and then there will be like whatever the operations which they, they were performing in the source system and that will be moved back to central finance system so once you have done the te technical implementation then the value realization phase will start where the client will actually start to get uh, the value which uh, they had which was proposed to them or which they had assumed that okay this will be the value benefits which they will be getting so that was about in high level what will be the activities from the central finance perspective or what will be the major phases so now coming again back to the implementation methodology phases like what are the phases under which what which, which will have under the sap activate methodology so it's majorly into six steps so we discover phase where we kind of uh, discover the possibility of what needs to be done what how the project benefits will discuss with the client prepare phase again explore phase realize phase deploy phase and run phase run phase is the final phase in which you close the support so this is similar to the hypercare phase coming to like the primary activities under each of the phases so under discover phase you will have you will perform the solution validation you will perform the solution scope you will finalize after workshop with the clients you will finalize the what will be the scope of your solution how many company codes how many systems they want to do it in the pilot phase how many systems they will go ahead in with the other phase in the subsequent iterative phases only and once the solution scoping is done and validated by the functional consultants that is us cfin consultants then we'll go with the prepare phase so in prepare phase it will be primarily for the system readiness from the uh, central finance perspective so we will educate the users we will educate ourselves if there is any upgrade required with the central finance learning generally uh, uh, central finance if there is any gaps that have been discovered so that will prepare the users as well as we will prepare the systems parallelly for the technical implementation or to go ahead with the implementation so in this we will have the sap nodes installed in the source system target system and if there are any third party integrations involved let's say that uh, currently there are source systems so source system will also have some connections to other erp systems from or rather than erp other third party systems from which the data is coming for example currently one source system for their reporting apart from their source erp or sap for primary transaction might be that they are using black black line for closing related solution might be they are using so salesforce for the sales so all the data will be integrated into their sap ecc and which in turn sap ecc it will come to central finance so we not only we need to check the whether this is coming uh, central finance or not if there is any activity required from those third party integration perspective that also we need to check and conclude in this particular prepare phase uh, prepare phase only any questions still in discover phase and prepare phase or the earlier okay so coming to explore phase so explore phase is more about knowing what is the client requirement and how much we can fit it in the standard processes which is recommended by sap and how much more customization we need to do in order to implement without disturbing their processes let's say that if there are some gaps which cannot be done into the standard solution we need to have the 
uh, customized solution or out of the box solution built for this particular solution so and then in this also you will have your enterprise structure defined you will profile all the solution and as well as you will perform the fit gap workshop as well so let's say that like uh, in 2022 version SAP has almost improved quite a lot in the central finance perspective but earlier like in 2018 or 2019 versions and there were very limit very ma many limitations in SAP which was not possible to implement or which the reporting was not possible into the central finance so one example from my previous project is that in source system they were using accounting approach and in central finance system they wanted to have the ledger approach for reporting so if you're using accounting approach that means for each of the ledgers and for each of your accounting approach let's say for ifrs for local reporting you are using different set of accounts but for ledger approach you are using one account only and then you are posting into two different ledgers for moving to ledger approach so that particular solution was not provided by sap to have that kind of reporting needs so either you need to go ahead with the similar approach or you need to uh, then design a custom solution to fit into that so this will be such requirements which you will be exploring in the project phase uh, in the explore phase so where you need to come up with what all the gaps which you cannot do it in the standard phase again there can be some use cases where even though standard is there but since business is not following the processes as per the correct approach so that's so that can could be one reason where you need to uh, again do an additional customization because even though that is supported but you cannot implement or that is not technically feasible so a very common example of this is the document types so especially when uh, new gl is not implemented in the source systems so uh, let me know if you need any clarification or if i'm going too fast or slow because yes uh, i am assuming that everyone is well aware of this for hana like normal sapfi settings so but yeah let me know if there is any clarification required so let's say that unusual is not implemented and there are document types and if it is not implemented then you no need to split the documents on the various parameters like profit center or business area or any xyz parameter so in this case business will not post as intended let's say that they can post an asset accounting document a document type they can use other document type as well other nature of posting as well similarly for uh, on re they can post only gl to gl posting because the system will not have any limitation so even though it's expected that they will be using as per the intended processes or the standard sap recommended approach but they might not use and when in central finance because central finance is built on top of s4 hana your new gl is mandatory and almost every client will have the requirement to activate the document splitting as well so once you uh, uh, this uh, once you configure the document splitting then you will configure your item categories and document type classifications as per the standard as per the process approach you will not assume that okay the business might be doing wrong so you can correct it so in order to split correctly if the business use business must use the document uh, in a recommended approach but might be that they built already top up or the user or the user awareness cost is too much that they might not correct or even for historical documents the volume is too much that the client is unwilling to uh, correct the that part or he is unable to also you can say because for a bigger company there will be a lot of users and to get it corrected or to expect that that will be that prerequisite will be met before we implement central finance that will be uh, uh, too much to ask for the central finance prerequisite so those are the yeah some cases one can be either uh, the limit technology limitation of central finance one could be the out of box requirement 
of clients where they are using something purely in a custom way one could be this example that we discussed that the business is not using because oh, at last if we see central finance is nothing but the copying the processes of the source system so if we if the process itself is wrong central finance also will be wrong so we need to correct those cases also so for that also there can be customization required let's say that for example uh, if the document type is used incorrectly or not used as per the process you might need to define a custom mapping where document type is not only based on uh, the document type mapping is not only based on the document type to document type mapping rather it can be based on like document type plus gl combination so those were those are the some cases where you will need again you can configure this mapping in central finance so we'll come back to that once we configure once we have the system ready or if not we can go back to the check the config before the system is ready as well but we will not be able to configure until the system is ready coming to realize phase so realize phase is nothing but whatever we have built in the prepare and explore phase that should now reflect into system in both realize and deploy phase so realize is will maintain the mainly like if you need to ask me what will be the difference between realize and deploy so in realize we will be doing the configuration and other checks quality checks uh, testing etc in deploy phase we will actually deploy the solution like we will perform the initial load replication reconciliation user training etc so in realize phase what we will do is we will perform all the cfin configurations uh, the one which we saw earlier on the cfin mg screen so for source system we will maintain from the dates from when to when you want to uh, replicate the data for central finance system you will configure all the mapping rules mdg settings uh, the rfc connections between the slt and other separate system business system configuration mapping etc and then apart from that there are a few consistency checks also that you need to perform and activate as well so there can be like configuration consistency checks master data consistency check tax consistency check uh, that you need to perform at central finance to confirm that okay now whatever settings that we have done as part of our configuration are in line with whatever should be there let's say that uh, when you are mapping a gl account it should have some similarities between what you have mapped in the central finance with what is configured in the source let's say if a gl account is open item in source you cannot map it to a non open item in source in central finance also it should be open item otherwise when the clearing will happen in source those documents will fail because those are posted as non open item in central finance similarly when you are posting on grir account it should always be balance in local currency in both source as well as central finance so if if similarly if goes for balance sheet on pnl account so if it is balance in source it should have balance it in central finance as well so if there is any mismatch on these parameters uh, the document replication will fail so in order to avoid those common issues which could be taken care at the starting phase by running the consistency check sap recommends that we should run the consistency check we should fix most of the error which we can means basically we need to review all the errors what needs to be fixed but yes having zero errors in consistency check is not a prerequisite to activate central finance or start working uh, or start the real time replication but it's good always good to resolve all the errors which you can in the consistency checks uh, to have the higher percentage replication from the day one itself or whenever you start the real time replication and even in initial load so consistency check not only helps in real time replication it will help you in the initial load only because if the mappings are not done properly or if the configurations are not in line with the expected solution you will face uh, huge number of errors in initial load as well as uh, the central uh, in the real time replication 
again like this settings like whatever you are doing you will be doing it in both quality will be testing in till quality will test all these things in the realize phase from the deploy phase deploy phase is basically what you can say is you can see it's the cutover plan or the cutover strategy so here you will uh, define a cutoff date from which you want to start the replication or start the settings for central finance and then you will perform the initial load as per the let's say that you want till 2022 you want the data to be posted and from initial load and from 2023 you want the real time replication to start so usually uh, it's recommended that you start your real time replication from day one of the financial year but that's not a mandate it's only a recommendation not a mandate so because so that all the data will be your on the in line with whatever uh, for the current financial year you will have all the data posted from real time replication or on the line item basis so for current years you will have all the documents per line item again in this half once the replication once the initial load is completed you will reconcile the data data reconciling as in you will match the values between source system and target system for that sap has also given uh, multiple reports to compare the report uh, compare the values between the source system and target system so let me check if we have access to there will not be any data but yes if it is there i can show in system any questions still now okay i think we will discuss this when sap is not a project management methodology rather it's implementation methodology which encompasses some project management techniques but it's in stand alone it's not a project management methodology again with sap activate framework you will get this three are the pillars sap best practices which you can get on rapid.bpsap.com so here you will find all the documents related to the standard configuration or the recommended configuration each functional functionality wise you can explore this site and then if anything is required you can directly use the settings from this guided configuration on the cloud also you will get the guided configuration where you can like kind of upload the values and the configuration for on the on premise version you will have the sap model company code which you can uh, use to either in poc time also you can use the model company code configurations and then sap activate methodology this we already discussed what will be the phases and how central finance will be structured in each phase so what will be the benefits of sap best practices when you with sap best practice you can expedite the time taken because you already have the initial work done by sap you can use the same values uh, it's not same values rather the same processes same setup and uh, to fit and only you need to configure the results which you have or the configure the gaps which you have identified in the fit to gap workshops so fit to gap workshop is basically is to assess what will be the uh, what are the configuration or what are the additional configs which has not been covered in the sap standard and uh, you need to configure an out of the box solution or customize it to fit the customer requirement again since this best practices are already tested by sap multiple times with the proven results on multiple clients you will know okay the chances of failure are very less and you will get results as intended again since as best practices are standard well or standard configuration which are industry tested and industry common so you will have like when if you want to migrate to sap on cloud version you will have like it's it will be a very simple onboarding process where you can only configure what will be the 
values as per the template and it will be like the time to implement and the solution will be very less and you can get to central finance or even for s for hana in a quite faster time again guided configuration we have already discussed that you can use the self service configuration ui for con uh, for cloud based solution for on premise you can use solman and model company codes for configuring the best practices and then you can configure any additional data like if it is uh, for the customization you can go ahead with the change management framework to implement the uh, findings of fit gap workshop okay so since we already know this as asap was the earlier framework which was recommended during the sap ecc implementation or the earlier implementation now it's the sap activate which will be uh, the primary or the go to framework for sap all the sap implementation by sap and it will be an uh, like now sap no longer recommends this sap launch or sap asap methodology and sap has each version like separate methodology for all the implementation for system conversion they have separate for sap launch and compromise methods they have different new implementation they have a different sap methodology and for landscape transformation that is for uh, cfin is part of the landscape transformation so for this and they have a separate methodology again you can find the improvements and implementations like what are the additions which were not included in the sap launch or asap but main improvements i think we discussed couple of them already that the inclusion of best practices and model company codes you will have the agile project delivery so delivery so whenever let's say that you find something in the realize phase you find that okay we don't have we have missed one gap which was not included in the prepare phase you can always go from here to here and again for those gaps only and then you can uh, do the same steps so this prepare to realize phase is kind of an iterative approach prepare to deploy phase also you can include because if you have already implemented something and there you find gap so this phase can be an iterative approach so where you go back and forth on the gaps uh, till the implementation is complete so it's an agile methodology again the cycles have reduced fit gap blueprints also sap is by its provider but it's not again it's up to the client and consultants to use or how or the way to identify the gaps with the standard process in this part we were discussed so this ppt will also be provided to you you can uh, get it uh, if you have any questions we can discuss again in the next session any questions from this sap activate framework if there are no questions let me go back to sap and so some of the configs so coming to this so as we discussed in this realize phase and deploy phase we will have the reconciliation of the line items or the comparison whether how will we uh, have, let me include the t codes as well so you have all this reconciliation available where you can compare the count of the document item whether if let's say 100 documents are posted how many will be posted in how many are posted how many are not posted that you can see in this t code you can find the documents at the balance level as well like it will compare not only com it will compare the gl account and the debit and credit line items systems are not connected so we will not get to see the output but this is the parameters which you can execute to compare the data so your source system will be nothing but your rfc connection for whichever source system you are using so in this case we will be using id8 system we will provide the 
logical system name. Here you will give the source system. So let's say that the company code mapped is 1000 in source system and in central finance system it is mapped to 1001. So here you need to provide the company code. Again, these are the optional fields. You need to only provide the logical system, but uh, the time taken to execute the reports will vary based on the data and based on the selection parameters what you have given here. So it's recommended that you fill to the specific how much you can for the reporting purpose uh, for comparing the reports. So let's say that if you are comparing the initial load, so you can just give the entry date in which you have performed those initial load cycles. So let's say you have run the initial load on 5th of September. So you can give from 4th till 7th the entry date. If you want to compare a periodic values in the let's say you are working on the run phase and you want to compare the values for a particular period whether for this current month end when the month end closing is going on whether everything has been implement uh, each of the document has posted or not uh, let me try to run anything but when these are mostly self-explanatory reports where you need to perform uh, give the parameters as per the requirement or as per the comparison which you want to make and the same will be uh, you can get the value so here you will get this yes yeah, so the output will be in this format so here you can see this there are total of these many documents posted in source system so i did not give any parameters out of which in central finance nothing is posted there are no errors also in AIF and everything is not in central finance. So this document basically it will show that nothing has been triggered in the triggered from source system to SLT system which has to come in central finance. So basically what you will get to know is that this documents are not part of the logging table or not part of the SLT. So if you click here you will get to see the you will, you will see the document details in the output that what are the documents which has not been posted and if required like if it is part of the scope then you can decide whether you want to implement it or not any questions similarly you can get the same details for other as well so this will come if you want to see only the error. So this line item is one this additional parameter also. If you want to see only the errors so that let's say there are 100 GL accounts in the source system and you want to know how many for how many GL accounts there is a mismatch. So in that case you can just select the uh, field with with errors and then you will be able to see the reconciliation mismatches only and then based on that the, the output you can reconcile to fix the errors like only the like why the balance mismatch is coming so primarily what will happen is that if there is a mismatch on i will just say about the major reasons why the mismatch could happen so one is that there are documents yet to be replicated uh, so that you will find in the comparison reports of so first one second one could be if you are using parallel laser approach so in source there will be a different strategy in central finance there will be a different strategy for posting so in that case uh, there can be some error in the way ledger is derived or something so that could be one reason if you are comparing in the group currency so in this case source system will replicate the data that it will copy the exchange rate based on what you have posted in the source document for but for group currency it might be that in source it's not being used and in central finance only it will be used so for that it could be in some cases the reason could be the exchange rate maintained in the central finance is different from what it is in the source so in that case for group currency and other additional currencies which are part of s4 hana finance only so that it will pick based directly from the central finance system based on the exchange rate but for others it will pick based on the 
postings which has been done in the source system so let's say if it it has been posted with exchange rate 1 is to 10 in the source system it will for document currency local currency it will take that 10 only as the rate but if the same has been maintained as 11 in the central finance for group currency so it will take for group currency conversion it will take that rate so these are some mismatches which is that at least we get in the starting phase where we identify the root causes or this configuration gaps also and because this gaps might not come under uh, the consistency checks as well again this temporary postings so this is a new feature by sap let's uh, for posting temporary entry to reconcile the month and closing so it is similar to what you can say is that let's say that for a particular period let's say for its period august period when the closing happened there were total of 100 documents posted in the source system out of which 10 did not get posted into central finance due to, and these are in aif errors so what will happen is that once you execute the temporary posting program so corresponding to that 10 document central finance will create an temporary entry into the central finance with the same values it will copy the values and temporary gl accounts from the config and it will post the entries into central finance and once those documents you fix the errors at later point of time into central finance uh, into the and those documents are posted in cfin then this temporary postings will automatically get reversed as soon as the documents are getting posted so if you want to compare like if you want to include the temporary posting while performing the reconciliation or not that also you can uh, perform here when gl fi balances it is similar to line item balances but it will uh, take a uh, check at the gl account level again this will be used to compare the clearing status so again these are like line item to line item comparison for all the gl account customer vendors whether what uh, there can be some cases where if especially if the central payment is not activated and you need to check whether if a yes, document is cleared in source system it must be cleared in the central finance system as well and vice versa so to perform that uh, you can use this comparison report uh, to check if the clearing status is matching or not especially like there can be few cases where it is not matching one is that if the central uh, if the payment document once you clear it and the clearing document is not yet replicated one could be that it has been reset in the central finance system as well so earlier like real 2020 version uh, you could reset the document in central finance system but from 2021 onwards SCP has restricted to reset any document using fbra in the central finance system but still you can do it in the debug mode or via the custom solution uh, so if there is any mismatch coming due to those reasons uh, you can use this comparison reports uh, to check the mismatch and then you can analyze those documents why the mismatch is happening and based on that you can uh, take the necessary action coming to accounting document again we have same thing so we can compare the count of CU documents which has been posted in source versus central finance so this will be comparing your CUBQ to CUBQ again this notes are missing primarily it seems but yes so here you can see the CUBQ versus CUBQ status uh, like how many documents have been posted in source system or your source CRP and how many has been replicated to central finance. Uh, one more thing that you need to be aware is that this comparisons you can do primarily for the documents which are coming from your SAP ERPs. Like for non SAP ERP, this comparison reports will not work as intended. So for that, you need to define custom logic for reconciliation of the documents because as we said for uh, non SAP ERPs, the system like SAP is starting the replication from the staging tables and it is not accessing the source systems directly via RFC module. So that is the reason uh, 
this comparison reports will not give the desired result uh, for non scp erps and you might need to customize to compare again coming to consistency check so again here you can give the system and here in this check group okay there is nothing configured but okay let me check if something else is okay nothing is configured but okay so what will happen is under this check group you can define like what all consistency checks you want to check so under this you will have options whether you want to configure uh, you want to check only the config data you want to check the master data so under that uh, you want to uh, check the consistency for tax etc so uh, when you click on this check group you will have a lot of options where you need to select what all things you want to compare let's say that you have only done your configuration and you want to check whether whatever config and mapping you have done for that configuration objects whether that is correct or not so you can check only that particular config objects and if there is any mismatch you can fix that first before going to moving to master data so you should keep running this consistency checks uh, once you have uh, done a particular set of configuration so that if there is a mismatch you can fix that immediately rather than doing it at the end once you are done with all the configs and then you find out that okay there are some basic uh, settings which we have done it incorrectly or there are some uh, mismatches on those again you can compare even for that particular source system you can compare on the source system company code as if you don't give any company code it will compare for all the company codes uh, but let's say that if you are implementing partially then you should give the source company code as well again we are more worried about the errors and what errors only because whatever is correct we don't need to check so if you want to check only errors you can just select this if you want to so everything like including whatever is configured correctly so that you want to know what what are the settings are correct and what are the mismatches so you can unselect this box so these are uh, like mainly from the comparison and uh, consistency check perspective to check for the config objects and master data object whether everything has been uh, configured correctly or not so this will be your eif screen so this will be the error handling tool so if you have any documents which is not posted or even the ones which are posted at also you can see here so if you currently this will be blank because we don't have anything in the logging table but once we have the data starts coming into the system you can monitor the those documents how it has been posted and what if there is anything wrong, wrong and you want to correct it or you want to fix the errors so this will be the one point in the central finance where all FICU and cost objects will be uh, will be coming into this particular t code so here you can give the interface versions so if you want to select for accounting document you need to go for the ac doc uh, this one interface if you want to go for su document you will have this up again you can configure it's not that this is the only option like only this interface which you have to follow throughout or this is the only thing no you can if you want to create your own interface you can still do that to monitor uh, this fi document coming from the scope of the project if you want to configure it no this would be fin cfac doc 2 or if you want jdc doc 2 anything you can configure but this must be configured or the standard one should be used if you want to monitor the replication of the document in error handling so again with each you will have different parameters so here you can give these are the data which you will find in the cfnc cs3 table so if you can filter additionally using the uh, 
filter to get the error monitoring only for those particular selection criteria. Then you can filter by date. And this quid will be this quid is, will be you can say that unique identifier. Let's say that for similar to accounting document, we have a uh, company code fiscal year and document number as unique identifier for any particular document similar to for AIF or for the central finance. You, we have GUID, which will be a unique identifier for any document. So you can find only one good per one trigger. So if you want to, you can trigger the same document turn and again and again. So it will create uh, multiple goods for the same document. So this GUID is you will be unique per database trigger. So it if you will. Document is triggered once it will create for that particular timestamp. It will create one unique good and with comparison to that you can monitor in this error handling tool uh, whether this document has been posted or not. If it is into error, what error it is. Again, you will have the status whether it is in processed, whether it is processed with manual means without any errors or with warnings and errors. And again, if you let's say that you uh, there is one document which is coming from source system and you don't want that particular document in the central finance. So you can cancel that document so it will not be a part of uh, your central finance system. Again, coming to this emergency correction again, this is a powerful feature which is provided by SAP. Ideally, we should not use unless there are some corrections required. SAP does not recommend to use it frequently and only when there are some, you encounter some error which you want to update on the go. So this you can see that if you click emergency correction and. So if there is an error, you will have the data good and under this tab you will find the item information and also what are the data which is coming from source system. So in this item information, it will have the data from the CFIN SCCIT table or it will be have the similar data what will be posted in the central finance system. So in those cases, let's say you want to modify that particular thing. Let's say that uh, you have posted a document in source system and in central finance. It went into error that document type is not configured. Let's say you have used the custom document type in source system. Let's say starting with Z. So in the standard that document type will not be there in the central finance system. So you have two options in that case to resolve that error. Either you create a new document type into the central finance system with the particular ZB or you map it to a different document type. But and the third option is that you change the document type on the fly in this particular AIF as well for the one time. So it will whatever you change the value in this particular item information tab. So that will be updated in the document and this will be a one time thing only. It will not update any mapping. It will not create any new document type. Rather it will update uh, what is in the standard mapping. Hey guys, just a quick info. Zantic offers training for SCB S4 HANA Central Finance. This course instructs professionals on how to optimize financial processes, streamline accounting and reporting, improve data quality, and support budgeting and forecasting. Thousands have already used this program to advance their SAP careers. Like those who have shared their success stories on Zarentech's YouTube channel, their testimonials demonstrate how this course can boost SAP skills. In just a few weeks, you can gain the knowledge needed to leverage SAP S4 HANA Central Finance. This can open doors to new jobs, opportunity, or help you excel in your current role. The Zarentic SAP Central Finance training distills a complex topic into a clear insights and actionable skills. Visit the link below to learn more about Zarentic's SAP S4 HANA Central Finance course. Getting started now is the smart first step for hey guys welcome to today's session so today primarily we will be discussing on the source system setup part 
uh, like we'll understand how the source system is technically ready what are the settings which we need to do in the source system and we'll also try to configure a separate company code with along with posting few data in order to prepare for the same data to be migrated to central finance in both as part of initial load and via real time replication so let me share my screen so coming to central finance we need to first check whenever we are starting with the source system we need to first make sure that central finance is technically implemented technically activated in the source system as well as in the central finance system which is the s4 hana instance so for our ecc system our source system we will be using id8 system and for central finance we will be using s4 system so make a note of that whenever we are using these systems so that you understand which settings which we are doing although i will be telling which system uh, we are using you can take a note if there is a confusion so first in order to make sure we you need to check the t codes cfin uh, img so cfin will be for the sap menu node and cfin img for uh, the configuration nodes so cfin t code will only be available in the target system so in source system if central finance is not activated so in this case uh, from here this node will get to know whether it is activated or not sometimes even though it's activated and you are not able to see this configuration so you can directly go to sm30 and use this table we cfin underscore source underscore set so from cfin perspective this is the only configuration which we will need to do in source system any other thing which we need to do in source system will be either via cookbook implementation for customizations or in the form of technical uh, notes which will be done by technical team please bring the table name here in the chat Yes, yes, this I will include in the presentation as well. So this is the first step of which we need to do, right? Uh, in the source system. Yes. So this is the first step. Means from technical perspective, you need to do only this config. But based on what you will uh, come to decide, what will be the entries maintained? So those like what will be the data scoping and all, and that additional uh, part will be in the scope. But as far as configuration is considered, I will only be doing uh, this configuration. So let, in this, you will maintain all the company codes which you need to uh, implement for uh, the central finance activation or like for which you want the replication to happen or for which we basically you can say that whichever company code are in scope that you want to that you will need to configure here. Then only it, it, it will be picked by the SLT uh, for the replication and also we can perform initial load on this table only. So let me explain a little bit more about this table and but before that let's let me explain the why this table is required or why this config is required so whenever we say real time replication which means that um, this will be discussing only about the sap to sap system connection because as we discussed yesterday like non sap system it's a complete different approach only how the data is stored so in real time replication like whenever any accounting document is posted it has to trigger to central finance but before that we will need initial load or what you can say is if business is saying that we need to have the data from historical postings as well otherwise you will not have the balance matching between the source system and central finance system so in order to reconcile the data perfectly we will need to have the data from historical data as well as oh, in this my business can have multiple requirements so let's discuss about the initial load first so let's say we are implementing central finance in 2023 like from or we can say that it's already august uh, september so we can say okay from first of jan we will be starting the real time replication if you're working on a current project so now there can be so what should be done to the data which has been posted until 2023 or what will be uh, what will happen to the data which has been posted until let's say on 31st december 2023 so here client is saying that whatever in this either you can load the balances like let's say your consolidated balances at the gl level or you can choose to uh, replicate the complete document as well for historical documents. So let's say if client is saying that I want to have, okay, maintain one more tab here, balances, and then line items. So for 2019, since it's old posting and most probably they don't need the line item or the complete document they just need the balances so balances we need line items not required for 2020 also again it is completely we need to discuss with client how they want the data to happen and similar way we will configure in the 
uh, that particular table. So for 2020 as well, they want my balances should be loaded or it should be why? So I put it as yes, no. And they don't want the line items. For 2021. From 2022 onwards, they want OK, they want to load both the balances. As well as the complete document also. And from 2021, it will be real time verification. So, with this, automatically you will have balances as well as the line items, that is the complete documents replicated. So, now coming to only these parts, how we can ensure that these balances are replicated or when we are, the system should pick the data based on this client requirement or based on this requirement again this can vary client can choose that okay i want balances directly from until 2023 and from 2024 i want all the data or they can go ahead with any number of years but the longer the years like let's say if they decide to take all the documents from last five years at line item level and not at the balance level then the data volume will be huge for initial load Plus, uh, it may take longer time to perform the initial order to perform those uh, data postings into central finance. So it is critical that we consider the data volume as well while deciding this and to decide the timelines as well, like to estimate the an approx time, how much time it could take uh, to perform those postings. So is this requirement clear like uh, real one like it can there will be a lot of GLs as per the financial statement structure. So let's say we have these multiple GLs. So in this, I will take for any one year. Or yes, we will be starting with the configuration part as well today from the source mm -hmm. system perspective. I think someone was asking for this initial load. So what what we are what our approach is that will understand this table, and then we'll create one source config from scratch. And then we will post few documents before starting the system connection. So that will be treated as our historical line items. Then we'll do this configuration post which it should start the real time replication. So that is the approach which I was thinking to start with because if you start directly with the initial load group, you will have to use the existing database and data from sandbox system. And we don't know how the source, uh, how the company codes are configured. So again, that will be a mess to understand the like um, because that sandbox data will not be of good quality or the you can say that the same quality or will not understand the configurations which were done in the sandbox system because it might have been done for some other user, other users for practice. Purpose. But maybe I can show in system if it has even any data. So what I was trying to say. So until now what we're discussing here is completely from the source data. We have not included anything on the CFIN part. So it's only that whatever data is in the source system or in the, your existing ERP, what should be the treatment of it in to be scenario in CFIN? So if you, if you see this particular company code, so at the end of 2023, you have these many balances and you will be starting the replication from 2024. So how client wants to treat these balances, whether they should lead, uh, load one 
manual JB or direct one, it should be loaded as part of balance that OK, this GL account 14 uh, zeros have this account balance of 3000 only, so it will be posted as one document or whether you want to post this documents as the complete document, how it was posted. Whether for this year, let's say whether you want to post this document separately as the whole, it was like it was posted in the source system. Or you want to post this particular GLs as only one entry. So if it is five, uh, six, seven GLs, so there will be six, seven document posting with the help of a technical account or migration account. So this table talks about. Uh, this only when we are saying whether we want, we want to load balances or we want to load the line items. So this will be decided by the client, right? Yes, so this will be decided by client along after analyzing the data volume as well. Let's say that some client will have deadline of let okay, they keep their open items for two years or three years. After that, anything they don't are usually not clear or something. So in that case, yeah, usually like up till two years, uh, they will try to have the open items, but again, it's up to the client. Uh, after consider checking the data volume. OK, yes, so once client has decided on this, that what will be my. What is the approach or what is the data years which they want to replicate as balance or the line items, then we'll configure that in that CFIN source table. If we go here, so here, let's say when we include our new company code, uh, let me include the new entry. So let's say that we want to do for 001. Then here, this first tab will be for from which year we want to start transferring the balances. So in this case, the client is showing that okay, from 2019, we want to have the balances. So again, if you see this example from 2019, 2021, they just want the balances. So, so it will just upload the end of year balances. So they can directly start from 2021 also or 2020 also. Like for three year continuously, they might need, they might not need what is the end of year balances. So let's say that here they have said that okay, from 2019 they want balances. So here, from this the system will understand. From it will just calculate the end of year balances and then it will upload GL wise. So for this particular postings, whatever will happen, let's say for this document, it is posted as the balances so for 2019. So once you double click on those documents, you will not be able to drill down to the document level. What are like from where these balances originated? You'll be able to just see that. OK, this GL account has this much balance. At the end of 2019, but will not be able to drill back to uh, the documents which uh, cause this balance in the source system or in the, in the central finance system. Here you will maintain documents. If we see here, documents they want from 2022. Okay. So once they say like this scenario cannot happen, uh, that it, they want balance line item in one and next year they don't want. So from the year which they start line item until next year, like it should have both uh, balances as well as line item. So from 2022, they want both balances as well as line items. Here it is the from which period they want to start. So again, from 2021, it's not mandatory. They have to start from the period one of their fiscal year only. They can choose any period from which they want to start the line items so let's say we want from september so you can maintain nine this key periods is nothing but let's say that whenever we are posting a document or whenever this new documents are posted 
So and it will be replicated immediately to the central finance system via SLT. In that case, the goods which are generated in the holding table, once the document is posted, we don't need it. Technically, ideally, if we say we said it, OK, my document is posted, we don't need it and it can be deleted. But in some cases, let's say that if you want to repost those documents, if something is wrong, so in the, you will need that good to retrigger the document and that we'll discuss again in future. But so this period table, it keeps like for how much, how many months that data should be kept before it deletes from those holding tables. So let's say we'll keep three months. Again, we'll configure this once we have our we configure our company codes. And this GL reconciliation settings. So this we only need. So if we come back to here, we discussed that okay, there are three type of replications happening. One is my CO postings. FICO postings. And then cost objects. So CO postings are nothing but which are pure CO transactions like secondary CO postings you can say. FI CO postings are FI postings plus FI postings which trigger the second uh, the CO postings. You can say all the primary cost postings will be part of FI CO postings. Cost object will be the cost master data. So this let's say you have so all these three you have separately have the options to activate the replication or you can choose not to. So in case you are not replicating the CO posting, then only you need to configure this table. If you have if you are activating both CO as well as FI, this uh, reconciliation check is not required. And this initial load finished is for once you are done with initial load and uh, then you need to check this checkbox. So this is again for technical reason. Uh, so that no one else like again repeat after the initial load is finished system will not allow you to uh, do the initial load once again again this package size will be used for how many packages it will be using for while uh, performing the bad jobs and also again this will be uh, either you can check with basic team how much uh, package are available and how much we can use it Okay, so we'll not save this and we'll proceed ahead with the configuration for our source systems. Because then system will not understand like uh, from which uh, date it has to transfer the balance and from which date it needs to start the replication. So even though it's S4 HANA and you want to migrate everything. So instead if you want to leave it blank or if you don't want to perform the initial load, SAP recommends an option for uh, blank load. So in that you choose a period which is in future and it does not have any transactions. So from that uh, it will just complete the initial load is technically completed and then you can start with the real time replication if you want to start right from scratch. Data we are loading directly in session only. This table is just to let SLT know from which date it has to pick which dates are the historical line items should be posted and from which date it should directly update the postings like whenever it is happening. Let's say that you activate give that date as period nine. So whatever is posted from today onwards. The system will hit it directly based on the trigger based approach of the SLT that at once whenever the document is posted, it will store it directly and whatever document has been posted till August. It will load into a batch of everything at once and those will be pushed to central finance system. So, okay. so this is just to extract the data so that the balances are reconciled before you start the real time replication or, or whenever you post any new document it should be uh, it will be going to central finance. So it is just to differentiate between how, what has been posted because uh, we were configuring an ECC system and there we are not changing anything from the process perspective that what has to be changed. So business will post as usual the document on postings we are not changing anything. So we just inform the system. OK, from this date I want all the data migrated in one go and from this date 
I want the system to in immediately trigger a replication whenever any document is posted. Okay. Let's see. Now we'll try to start with the separate configuration for our company code so that uh, a new company code so that once you practice, you can also start with uh, the configuration of new company codes and then similar structure we will follow in mapping and all as well. Source. Central finance. So today we will try to configure the source part. Once we have, uh, once we start with the central finance, similarly we will create and we will perform the mapping. So in source, let's say that company code. We try to configure with one company code, central finance, source one. Again, we will be doing the configurations which are necessary and if possible, wherever we will use the uh, standard configs also. Okay, we will not define any company. We can directly start with company code. If you want, you can start with the company as well, but since company as of now, we don't need it. So new entries. CFS1. Central Finance C1, City, I can take anything. I will take Euro. Yen. Maintain the global parameter also parallelly. A chart of account will create of our own so that we know what are the structures we are creating. Country chart of account not required. Fiscal year variant again we can create, but we'll use the standard one. Fiscal year variant and posting period variant also we can use a standard, which is proposed by SAP 0001. It. Again, functionality if required, you will use the standard one. We'll go ahead with controlling. Before that, let me create. Chart of accounts. So we'll create CFS1. Same, we'll try to create the same naming convention for CFS1. Maintenance language English. 
length will keep group chart of account we don't need as of now later if we need we will use it in the central finance we can define account groups we'll create new entries Okay, to BS to only to keep the process simplified for this. Sorry, I think I said got locked out. Yes. We'll, we'll keep balance sheet and profit and loss. Number range also we can give thousand two two nine 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 and then thousand. I think the balance sheet uh, both the same on the name convention. Okay, okay. Profit and loss. So we'll also keep maintaining here so that it, we not we need to remember while performing the mapping in central finance system. We'll assign return earning account. So here we have not yet created any accounts, but still we'll assign a create a statement account type. And once we have created the GL accounts, we'll come back and assign to it. It will give you a warning, but that is fine. Then we'll come back to create the controlling area as well. Same as company port, currency type 10, currency euro. We'll keep same as this one. Hierarchy will create one new here itself. Okay, we have not assigned the chart of account. So
So we'll create the standard hierarchy with this, then we'll go with the assignment and design it back to our company code. We'll go ahead and activate from 2020 or 2021 so that if we want to do any back postings, we can still do it to test for any cellular replication or something. So and then we'll activate a center and order management as of now. And then whenever like we keep the situations complicated, if any required, we can go ahead and activate the additional components as well. Let's see, so we'll maintain we'll copy the number ranges as well for this controlling area. We'll copy from a standard one, which is delivered by CP triple zero one. So we have to compose it one. So now you can see the number ranges defined we'll go back to financial accounting groups we have created then we will create one new document type also just to check uh, the treatment of custom document type in central finance. So again, this is even with the existing document types, we can do the mapping and all. But again, so ESA. Well, let's say create a document type CF. Just everything we can keep the same. I will change the description. See if in just why SAP is crashing today. Sure, if it was saved or not, let's check. It's not saved, so I'll create Nathan. Can you check with vendor why the SAP is crashing today? Till yesterday, it was working. Uh, sure, sir. Can you show me the error? I think I went past it, but it was showing it SAP GUI crashed. Okay, okay. okay if it comes next time, yes. Sorry? Yeah, if it comes again, I will take the print screen and I will show sure, it to you. Sure, sir. Thank you. Okay, so we have the document type.
then what we will need we'll need tolerance groups so let's configure that as well your tolerance we have done with the ledgers again if required we'll create ledgers also to test the multi-ledger scenarios but as of now we will not create anything any new ledgers but later if or we can create and we'll assign once uh, so cf cf in ledger total table will always be fagel flex t take time because once we create laser it will generate many additional tables so usually it takes time when we create lasers or activate a new ledger While it's activated, we can create few GL accounts. Let's say we'll create one. This one, let's say we create. Our balance sheet account, Wait, let's say bank account. Can give two zero five, which is usually used for bank accounts. Line item display will keep so that key. Nail account as well. Saved. Okay, I have saved. Nail, we can keep any refreshment account or any expense account we can keep. I'll keep the same description. Status group page. We can take the general one for field status. Okay, this is PNL, so we'll create the cost element as well. So I think we had our controlling area from 2021. So same we'll take. Cost element category one. So this I'm not explaining much because I think you're already aware most of it's our HTC settings. Uh, for the new company could creation. Okay, this is done. Again, coming back to config. Okay, GL accounts, which one we created, I forgot. So GL account, maybe you can maintain separately as well if there are lots. So because again, this list will need to map. So here I'm just giving one to GL accounts only for our basic remembering but when we do the mapping we'll take directly from the skb1 tables etc 
to then coming to and we can post one document and correspondingly we'll get the errors and then we'll parallelly fix it. So give document data is today's data. Then in jail account we can take thousand of company code we need to change. It seems there is some okay. Let's complete the let's try to post by FTP. Okay, yes, tolerance group we need to maintain. So let's go back to config. We need to enter this group templates. There should be at least one tolerance group. We'll try to copy one with the blank. Save it. Come back to this. Okay. Okay. Five number range also we have not done it seems. So let's copy. Copy this again from standard. Let's check again. Code is CFS one. Okay. Seems plant of road is active. Check the company config. So we can change company code. Yes, yes. Okay, 
just again we have not created cost center so we'll get some errors for that activation so we'll do subsequently so second gl account was We'll give value date as same date. Let's an assignment to C object, so we'll activate the ENPCA component. Controlling profit center accounting. Six setting. Uh, we will activate things. So here we will. Before we create, we need to activate this. Okay, so we can standard hierarchy. We can keep same as. This one will keep same as controlling area currency. And we can profit center group. We'll assign this CFS one. Currently, only it is to one company code, it will be there. Then we'll go back and activate it. Then we'll create a cost center. And so we'll give same cost center name as well. Or maybe we can give a naming convention. Again, we'll segregate this into multiple functions. So we'll keep it as admin costs for laptop. Person responsible again, we'll keep it as manager. Cost into category. You can keep it as sales or admin. Hierarchy will keep same which we created while creating controlling area. Currencies. Image my company code and controlling area currency, which is euro. Here we can keep the one which we created. Give the cost center. Okay. Session document rather to session initial load. There's no item category, okay. New GL account assignments are missing, so let's go back. Thing financial accounting new general ledger business transactions. Document types are already class, uh, classified, so we'll include the GL accounts. So thousand till two thousand, I guess, right? For balance sheet, let me check. And we'll create it as balance sheet. Again, from three thousand to three nine nine, keep it as 
revenue. Which expense again under balance it as and when required will change the item category assignment to to come back. Correct column. Okay, so we have the document posted. the document number let me check in basic did not create any new master additional master data right i think this is the list as of now now coming back to if we see about the central finance part like whether ideally our expectation is this should be treated as part of my initial data so currently there should not be any data in the central finance staging tables now, i think as we discussed yesterday as well regarding the central finance package which will give me us the complete information of what are the data implemented so let's go back to again So here, if you see here under this package, if in integration package, you can see all the components or all the details which will be in central finance in the source system, like for the central finance package in the source system, like what are programs were generated, what are so these programs are not required to us. So what are the transactions code which has been generated? So as you see here, it's only one T code, CFIN AMG and these two. Then what is important for us is the tables which got generated and we need to understand how those tables will be updated. So as of now, if we see for the document which we posted, these two tables should be of our use when we need to have the data. So currently, since we have not activated any settings for central finance replication, this table should ideally be blank for our company code. If you go back and check this document, here you are and company code if I remember correctly. So if you need to have the company code details or the document details, you need to check in CFIN CCIT table, which will store your line item information. So in this you can find all the line item details and the company code. So here if you search for code. And if we give our company code, you will not find any data updated yet. Okay. Now we'll do some logistic settings uh, as well today so that once we post any uh, documents with reference to MM, uh, PO or sales order in future, that will also help in creating those structures. Okay, again moving back to SPRO. So maybe once you are practicing, you can create your own company codes uh, so that you can check all the settings 
in parallel for uh, everything like so that you can check your initial uh, replication mapping etc uh, which are specific to your company code then this package will be important for you for us as a functional consultant to only understand what are the changes which have come or what are the packages what are the tables or programs if we need to find any this we can uh, find directly here no need for us to remember what are the tables in source system what are the tables in central finance system because if we check the table itself in cfin it will be much more than what is being stored here so whenever we need anything we can just come back and check here for the tables for the relevant tables which we need and then we can see if you are not able to see this package in like whenever you are working on any client projects or something so that means central finance component is not activated yet and you need to get in touch with the technical consultants to uh, get those sap notes activated if it is below ecc 6.6 and there is a consulting notes and if it is after ecc 6.6 they can just uh, activate the central finance component after updating like implementing few notes which are already provided by uh, sap no need to raise the consulting notes for those okay any questions till now or here or whatever we discussed okay. then coming back to logistics part config uh, we will need plant In inventories will create CF S1. We are trying to keep the same, same naming convention so that it is easier for us to remember while mapping. Otherwise, we will keep forgetting the names what we have created. So that's why wherever possible, I'm keeping the same name as the company code. And wherever we are plant, we'll need division. So we can either use the existing division or we can create a new one for us. CF. Then from sales org perspective, we'll need to define sales organizations. Again, I will create a new one. CFS one. So for CF currency, it is zero. Same goes for distribution channel. Either we can use any standard or we can create our new one. So we create a new one. Distribution channel for CF.
sales office and sales group are optional. So for customers will and vendors will use the standard account group. So if it is mandatory, we'll create at that time. Else we'll skip creation of sales office and sales group. For material management, we'll create one storage location for our plant. If S1 a new entry will create same. storage location it might not be required for mapping but still will keep it here so that if required we will have the data purchase or also will create a cfs1 That's all from the creation perspective. Yeah, shipping point we will need. So we need shipping point also. CFS one only. Take Germany factory calendar, the default one. point storage and that's all from the assignment part let's go back to assignment This we have already done. From controlling part also we have done. We will assign plant to company code. CFS one two hour domain. Then 
will set up sales area. Uh, you can let me know if uh, any separate explanation is required because these are basic settings. Uh, so let's try, uh, see if any explanation is required on those configurations or why we are doing it. Uh, please feel free to ask. This one, our division distribution center was CF. Sales area and sales office are optional fields. It can be mandated in field status variant, but usually the sales office and sales area is uh, optional field from logistics perspective. Still running. And then let me check if SLT settings are done or not. Should usually not take this much time, but it seems it's taking some time to open this node. We'll do similar configuration from the MM side as well. So this is almost uh, with this config, it will be completed from the SD side. Then we'll do the same assignments from the MM side. And then we'll create materials and then we can start in tomorrow's session with uh, logistics documents posting and once that is done we'll come back to the uh, central finance configs hopefully by then slt connections will also be established so we can go ahead with the replication and all meanwhile the, con meanwhile, the configuration is opening any questions till now like from today's session or even from earlier sessions. Maybe you can take those up. So let's assign purchasing org to company code. This will have a MM side shipping point to plant assignment.
until we do this config, the shipping points will not be visible for assignment here. So here we can assign our shipping point to this plant. Select our shipping point. This roughly covers our configs from the basic enterprise structure perspective. Then uh, we'll go back and create a material for which again we'll get some uh, errors which we'll try to fix in the runtime. When we run time, imagine whenever we are creating, we will get it and we will resolve it. I think that this will be the topic for. So we will create and detail CF. CFS1. Material 1. I uh, will take our cost centers and all were related to laptops, so we can either take it as retail or electronics. Material type finished product. Create basic data. Sales org data, purchasing, and accounting views. And CFS one. So yes, we'll get because this we have not configured this. So we will maintain the comp activate the company codes here. This one will maintain same as our controlling area settings 2021. Good. Low back postings will do. to come back. Base unit of measure, we can get this. Links we can take. To sales org. Division CF. Output tax will maintain zero tax.
menu order quantity and delivery quantity will not maintain as of now. Daily requirement transportation group will give anything. Again, these configs are required only uh, in configuring uh, in deriving the route and time taken when we create a sales order. So from financial pers uh, from as long as the five part is considered, this is not required. We'll be just using this information to create the sales order. And once the goods issue and goods uh, receipt are done, uh, goods issue, goods receipt, and then once we create the invoices, then we are only worried about how the those FI documents are treated into staging tables and in the central finance. So this config basically we are doing to have the those reference data which we want for from the central finance perspective. Values in class, we can take 7920. I think that's all. We have created uh, all the basic setting. Anything you guys think which we have missed and we should create any master data. Otherwise, from tomorrow onwards, we'll be creating logistics data and then we'll start with the CFIN setup. Hey guys, just a quick info. Zantic offers training for SCB S4 HANA Central Finance. This course instructs professionals on how to optimize financial processes streamline accounting and reporting, improve data quality, and support budgeting and forecasting. Thousands have already used this program to advance their SAP careers. Like those who have shared their success stories on Zarentech's YouTube channel, their testimonials demonstrate how this course can boost SAP skills. In just a few weeks, you can gain the knowledge needed to leverage SAP's Pohana Central Finance. This can open doors to new jobs, opportunity, or help you excel in your current role. The Zarentech SAP Central Finance Training distills a complex topic into a clear insights and actionable skills. Visit the link below to learn more about Zarentech's SAP S4 HANA Central Finance course. Getting started now is the smart first step. For so from system readiness perspective, what we do is we implement SAP units like it's implemented by technical team uh, basis and SLT. So first thing is from system replication, we need to implement uh, first we will be the activating SAP central finance business function. Again, like uh, if you have if you are using S4 HANA system as source system, then no technical notes are required. The system is already pre-built and delivered like to be used for central finance by SAP. If you are using SEC 6, then SAP will provide the predefined list of nodes that needs to be implemented, uh, which there will be one summarized node that we already discussed in the previous session. Like so, that note will contain all the list of nodes that needs to be impl implemented. If you are using the prior versions of ECC, which are out of support by SAP, then you need to create a consulting incident um, to SAP, and then SAP will work with uh, the technical team. To provide the list of what will be the corrections or what will be the corrective notes which needs to be implemented in your source system before system is ready for functional configuration by us then comes your authorization setup again this will not be to be done from the fi user but then you need to provi provide the authorizations for the users as per uh, the requirement to either the business users the consultants as well as the SLT users and our RFC user as well, because RFC will be accessing uh, the data from SLT and central finance system. Then third comes our 
source source system config that we there is only one config as we discussed that is the Cifin source set table. This will be your only table that we need only configuration that we need to maintain. We can either maintain it directly from this uh, view. If you, no need to remember, if you forget, you just need to go to Cifin IMG and this will be the only configuration which you will find under the general settings in the source system. So here you can maintain the same. And then recapping of what all this fields are. So this particular field uh, will be from which year you want to start the balance postings. Uh, so let's say that you're implementing in 2023 and you want to transfer the balances from 2020 or any prior year. So this you can choose. If you want to like in this field, you will transfer from which year you want the complete set of documents like line item by line item wise. So it will not just transfer the consolidated balance, rather it will transfer all the documents via initial load in the same way it is posted in source system. So for this cases, it will use a technical account to post uh, technical offsetting account to post the balances. So one leg will be your GL account, <coughs> GL account balance. The second leg of the posting will be a technical account which will define in the uh, central finance. If from this particular period or year combination of this two uh, fiscal year and period push this period, everything will start posting as it is in the source system. So if the document is posted to two GL accounts in the same accounts, it will do the debit and credit. Similar to uh, like it will just repost whatever is posted in the source system. Again, this period is how many how till how much time the data needs to be stored in the staging table after the data is replicated to central finance. So let's say you posted one document. It got posted to central finance uh, via replication, but still the data will be stored in staging tables for this period is specified in this. So this the primary purpose. To use this uh, field or to keep the data because you may argue that if the data is already repl replicated, why you need to keep the data and unnecessarily waste kind of system memory because in productive system you will have a lot of documents posted and it will consume memory so the reason is that sometimes the documents may not be posted or there can be some inconsistencies in the posting which you may identify at later point of time and in case you need to re-trigger those documents uh, from the central finance system by after let's say you can delete those document or if there is any mismatch or any undesired results which you see in central finance. So if you have the data in the staging tables, so CFIN CCHD will be stored header data and CFIN CCIT will store the item data. So in this case, if you have the data available in this particular table, you can re-trigger the document even if the document is posted. So if it is already posted and not deleted, you will get an error that document is already posted. If you have deleted the document, it will try to repost. So again, two or three questions uh, which I can say which you will have frequently. One is that let's say that uh, you are implementing in 2023 and you are transferring balances from 2020. But there can be some open items which are prior to this year. 2020 as well. So how will that be treated in central finance? Because if you transfer open item, let's say customer open item as balances. So in source system, you you might receive the payment from customer. And so you will definitely receive not might. So how if we load at it as balance, then the central finance, the clearing will also fail. If we just go by the logic which we discussed. So for this. Uh, SAP will always transfer open items as open items in the central uh, finance. So it, irrespective of what is mentioned here, if you have an open item, it will be loaded as open item. So in this case, the treatment will be something like this. So let's say that open item for balance. Let's say balance we have selected as 2022 or anyone. So we have open item posting. So let's say we have one OI account which is posted with 
50 euro and then we have in the same document the other posting is non oi account so i will just mention credit so in this case what uh, your initial load will some look something like this so it will so in this case like as per our config what will happen is that you are saying system that this i want it as open item itself that this line item i want in central finance system because we can have a clearing on this account from the source system so once it is cleared so i should have the line item details for this particular open item so in this case it will report but for the second account we have informed system that we don't want this line item as standalone line item in the central finance if there are other postings on this account other line items with let's say 1000 euros then it should just post one single line item with 1050 euro so we need only one leg of this document in central finance system the other leg we don't need at line item level so for that we'll configure technical account so that will come when we will discuss the central finance config but the posting will look something like this let's say that we have here we have selected in the like from this year so whatever we have selected let's say i will just uh, for this config if we say so here we are saying that i want my balances like till 2020 i just want like from 2020 to 2023 i just want the balances let's say i have 10 gl so and gl balances let's say for sake of simplicity that every balance every gl is having 1000 euros so here we are configuring that for each of the gls we just want the balance like in source if it is having a balance of 1000 euro in central finance also i want a balance of 1000 euros so that uh, my balances are matching like my trial balance is matching and from there on i will start the replication but out of this balance there can be there will be some open items also posted in source system so open item if you transfer it as balance then once the clearing comes the clearing will fail because so in order for so irrespective of what you configure here that here as the balance loads that from which year you want to start balance so it will for open item it will always transfer all the open items separately into central finance system so if we come back again to this particular document only so if this is the document and this is the config so if this document is posted in 2020 so in that case i am saying to my system that post like this that it will post one open item and one technical account so let's say if on this non oi account total balance is 1000 euro then it will post for open item you will have kind of this document and for non open item account your posting will look something like this non oi account credit 1000 and technical account 1000 so for if you have configured this and the posting and balances is like this but let's say the same document if you post it in uh, 2023 so in this case in central finance also it will replicate same way like based on what is the mapping you have done in same way it will be replicated so if it is balance it will replicate like this if it is uh, either documents or initial time repli- uh, real real time replication it will replicate the same document which has been posted let's say that when you are uh, working or implementing a central finance project you will need to test or do the poc for the documents or whether the functionality is working correctly or not so in that case let's say that if you have selected such kind of configuration or the valid configuration as per the data, what data needs to be migrated then it will take days just to finish the initial load and you will not be able to test the data what you want test the functionalities rather because 
in starting you will not be knowing what what is the exact configuration you will be starting you will be still in the puc phase where you need to test the functionalities before you can implement or perform the initial loop so in that case what sap recommends is perform an empty initial load so that you don't push any data as part of initial load rather you just start replicating the documents into central finance or in the test system via slt so that you can test the functionality whether every like data is coming via slt correctly or not whether the data is posting to central finance as per and the configs are as per the desired configs are not basically to test the functionalities or when you are working in the poc phase so you should always perform an uh, in uh, empty initial load so that you can test the replication and your cfin configuration whether that is coming as per what you have discussed in the scope or the fit gap analysis if there is any custom development in the, during the testing phase so this checkbox you should not do if you are doing your su replication as well so this checkbox if you have selected it will transfer the postings which are originating from fi to co or co to fi so let's say that you post one co documents which is triggering an fi document so if you do that it will not transfer it separately it will transfer the co document as well separately but ideally what happens is once the fi document is posted or once the co document is posted if a follow on document needs to be posted like once like if a, you are posting a fi document and primary cost element it will generate a co document as well so once it gets posted as a fi document so that a fi document will trigger a co posting into central finance directly so it will not replicate those follow on postings from source to cfin so this part you should only activate if you are not activating the co replication so if co replication is being activated you should uh, never check this and we should never this gl reconciliation flag should not be active so this is your ecc system this is your s4 so apart from your gl, re GL reconciliation tab everything else is same only you again click on this f1 you will get more information so as it said like only like u 2 5 postings which are triggered if you are not replicating those so because via your co postings you are only kind of transferring the co posting all the primary co postings are coming going via uh, this fi itself so as we discussed i guess in during this lecture when we discussed so all the secondary co postings will replicate via co monitor all the fi postings and the primary post primary cost element postings which are originating it will be going via fi monitor so so this postings like let's say if you're posting a su and it is triggering an fi document as well so it is basically whether you, how you want to treat those kind of postings so in case like if you go by what will be the difference if we check and if you don't check and co is not activated so let's say if co is activated then what will happen is if co is activated your co document will get posted to central finance via the co monitor and that co document will trigger again the fi document as per the configuration of central finance but if you have not checked and your co <coughs> monitor is not active so in that case what will happen is a CO, your co document will trigger an fi document in source system but since you are not transferring the CO document to central finance, that particular FI document, which is generated via this CO, that will not never go to central finance. So in that case, you will have one missing documents or those FI documents will be missing in the uh, central finance. So that's the reason we tell system separately whether uh, we need those documents or not. Means FI documents we will need, but how will they go? If CO is activated, it will directly push to the central finance via that particular CO document. If it is not uh, CO document is not activated, we need to manually send. Like manually send means if you don't check, it will trigger those documents uh, via the CFIN CSD table directly. Let's discuss what what will be config if we need to perform an empty initial load because again that will be critical in your starting phase of the config itself when you are working on the POC. So in this particular case, I will just try to modify this, but will not save it. So 
company code you need to enter which for which company code you want to perform because again all company code for testing you will check one or two company code out of a scope uh, and then you will only test the functionality so company code you need to select which company code you will be working in the puc phase uh, then start balances it will be empty because you don't want to transfer any balance you want everything to be blank you just want to test your real time replication functionalities then start document you will choose a doc, uh, any year in future for which replication is not uh, like you don't have any documents in the system because from here what you are what we are saying to system is that you start replicating the documents from this year onwards and as part of initial load but in reality for that puc phase we don't want any documents to come in a scope so we'll take any year for which there is no posting so i can take let's say 2025 or i can take any year in future for which there is no document it can be 2025 2019 9999 so whichever year in future system allows you can give so there is no restriction which year you should give immediate year or something you can give any year in period also you can give any but ideally we can give period as 12 or something but again because it will start replicating from this year this period so it can be anything again this will also be not relevant so you can keep it either blank or you can give if the client has already decided for how many months they want to keep the data uh, you can give this as well gl reconciliation whether you will check it or not again it will depend on uh, whether your replication is active or not initial load finished this we will not keep it because we are performing empty initial load so you we will run those configs to perform the initial load but again this is not required so to perform this will look something like this so if you do a setting like this and then you run the initial load settings so no documents will be posted and real time replication can be activated so in that case it will trigger the after that once that initial load is done you can perform your uh, settings in the central finance system and the documents will flow to central finance in this also like what sap recommends like uh, sap recommends like usually what we will do is like whenever we are working on like normal s4 hana or for any any project uh, for that matter so sap recommends is connect quality system with the quality system or when you are working on quality you should never touch the production data but in this central finance scenario what sap recommends is connect your quality system of central finance with productive system of source so that you will have all the data as fresh how the business is posting the documents and then you can test in the real time with the real time data of the project so this is the recommendation that you should have always your productive system from the source system uh, if it is whichever system the business using connect productive system with your test system development system again you can test with development but for quality testing you should connect with uh, productive system and then test the functionalities perform initial load or you can we can actually delete the initial load also if it is done so that will once we configure the cfin system then we'll check it we'll go with an overview of slt system uh, first like what all configuration we do means we'll do, we'll not do any configuration as such as a five consultant in the slt but we need to understand how the configs are done or what are the settings which can be done so that if required we can we need to provide the filters what all filters need to be done or if there is any scope let's say that there are 50 company codes you need to give them filters if for co postings especially you don't want all the data from co to be in the central finance system so you might give business transactions in the slt so that filters and all we will need to provide to slt consultants if it is required if not you can work on work without filter also so everything will be uh, coming to slt whatever is defined in the whatever is coming in the staging tables in the source system kind of intermediary for transferring the data so central finance is one of the use cases for slt it can be used to transfer other data as well like even for bw systems you can connect via slt to transfer the data so there should be whenever you are checking an slt system and you are working on central there should be at least one scenario with the central finance for the systems which we want to connect so this scenario central finance is mandatory 
again let's go back to the configs so this particular field you will find how many or what are the data which are configured to be replicated from slt so this does not mean that replication is on this does just means that we will have this table set up for which replication this object are part of the scope from the slt side so aufk it will replicate your cost objects if in sec hd it will replicate your fi documents cobk it will replicate your cu documents again this cost and keko these are still like uh, not part of the scope of this training but this will replicate your cost objects and activity rates again let's uh, if you see this particular objects you will find one difference that whenever we are replicating cost objects where whenever you are replicating co documents we are using the same tables as what in the source system only for fi documents we have different structure okay so let me tell what is the reason so the reason is like pretty basic that if you go by the simple design of the fi so for if you see for the cost object whatever you are using in source system like for all the cost objects when you create in source system also or ecc system or s4 hana system it will always be stored in aufk when you are implementing central finance which is again on top of s4 hana so if you create any new cost object it will go back to aufk table itself so that means whatever structure you need in your central finance system that is already available in the source system so same fields you can use for cost object in source system to the cost object in central finance system so we don't need to create a new field or new staging table to store this data for whether it be cost object for co document also cobk and coep is used to store the data in source system same tables will be used to store data in your central finance system as well but when we talk about fi documents so in for fi documents if we check so here we are using your bkpf bseg and other index tables as part of to transfer the data from it will store the data in source system it will not have but when it comes to cfin or s4 system we need the data to have it in the format of acdoca or even the basic nature of the what are, what are the information we need to post the document that changes so that the structure itself of the table which in which we need the data changes between your fi for your source system as well as the central finance system so that is the primary reason is the requirement was to have a separate staging table so in which we can have all the information all together uh, for a seamless replication or you can say seamless data integration so if you ask me whether would it have been possible if we don't create a new staging tables like currently it's mandatory but if we don't create then what will happen so in that case if you are using bkpf and bsec there would be lot of customization to integrate the data between your bkpf and bsec from source system to the acdoc format of uh, central finance system or any s4 system to avoid it uh, there was a need to have the data in the separate staging tables for fi and co so if we check back in source system if we, so this is the object which will it will get this package will get generated when we activate the fin cf node so if we again see the tables here so what are the tables generated so for our day to day activity we don't need to have access to this table and probably we will not have but for any package let's say this is not only for central finance so whenever you implement any uh, functionality or any new business function is activated so some package some or the other package will get included in cat so for central finance this is the one and whenever you check any package you can check like what are the t codes what are the programs what are the tables that will get uh, implemented or data added as part of that package so if you see again in this transaction so you will see only one function was implemented so one t code so this is the same t code which we get when we check the cfin img node so as far as our tables are considered so 
this three tables so this three will be primarily storing our data so this if in acchd will store your header data it will store the line item and app will store if the let's say there are any custom fields which you want to include as part of, like which you have activated by like custom development you have done to activate one additional custom field is there in the b -save, and you want to transfer that as well so that will not come under your acchd or it that you need to perform additional technical implementation to include that field into uh, <clears throat> this is structure so that data it will go under this table but primarily yes when we are uh, replicating the standard fields it will be these two tables only acchd and accit and again this table it will store the clearing so but we'll come back to this when we check and this if in source it uh, is the one which we have configured Okay, so coming back to Cifin SCCHD. So here you can check whether replication is it's for replication, it is for initial load. Again, going back to administration data. So here we'll find the system details and connectivity. If there are multiple systems, multiple system or multiple connection list you need. Is there then you need to find your system which uh, you are using uh, to check these details so here i will go to first admin data so this here you will you need to check whether what is the source system whether and that the, it is correct or not so let's say that if i am using this id8 system and here the source system is m 4 so that means it was recently changed it will connect the data from this system to this system then also that means that that system which we are using to check the data is not connected currently in the system so even if the data will get transferred to ltrc uh, in the cfin sccd tables or your staging tables it will not flow currently because that particular uh, ltrc setup is missing again here you can actually configure again whether you want to transfer via rfc or via the database connection here in initial load mode it will basically define how the sequencing is done whether you want to transfer in the sequence let's say 10 documents are posted so whether you want to transfer the data in the same sequence in which it was posted or you want to transfer the documents with line item first and the bigger documents a bit later to optimize the performance and time Again, these parts, we just need to know the overview. This will not be configured by us. It will be configured by SLT consultants. Okay, so this will select how many jobs we want for this transfer jobs. The number you select that will be based on how many <coughs> jobs you want for real time replication, out of which how many you want for uh, uh, in this. Uh, initial load and these jobs for calculation again this is relevant to your initial load mostly let's say that if you are having transferring the data in initial load and you will have like millions of data if you consider a productive system before it can be executed so this jobs for calculation will calculate the estimated time and estimated jobs required again we just need to know but before that what you need to check is so SM55 if I am not wrong so in this you need to check which server you are using application instance uh, no SM59 you will check and then it will be your RFC connection in SM50 for that particular instance you will check how many background jobs are there so in this you can see this dialog user so dialog user is nothing but how many so let's say i'm logged in so i have occupied one dialog user so at max 10 users can log in at a time so again coming back to this background job because we will be needing uh, the background jobs this settings it will utilize so we need to check how many it's available in that particular instance and within that we can give that okay how many jobs we want to kind of reserve for by the to be reserved by slt okay target system again we can check what is the rfc destination name or rfc name for this particular system and that will be the target system so if this will differ if the 
your SLT system is a standalone system. So if you remember, we already discussed that SLT can be implemented in three ways. On source system, on as a separate instance, or as, a, as on your S4 HANA system or central finance system itself. So if it is a separate system, like here we are using SLT on the CFIN system only. So that's why you just we are giving RFC. If it is a separate system, again, we'll need to provide the details in the same format which we have given here. This part, yes, here it will give the, you will have the summarized access. In most of the cases, if SLT is being used on a standalone system, so you will might you will not have access to even SLT system. You just need to provide, and if you have access, you can view. This screen again it will give the views of what all systems, what all things are configured. In this case, in this screen. And this is helpful for SLT consultant. So if let's say that you have posted one document and it's not coming into central finance system, but before we have already tested it, okay, everything is going successfully. So this is where when you raise an issue, SLT consultant will check if there is any any delay from SLT or if there is any issue from SLT side where the documents are getting stuck in SLT after being released from central finance system, uh, source system. So in this case, if you see, Yesterday I posted some document, so those were inserted into the logging tables or the CFIN SCHD table, but those details have not yet come to central finance or CFIN system. So in this case, that means there is some issue from SLT side or there is some issue basically you can say, which is stopping the data to be uh, coming in your central finance system. This we should not touch these objects. We can view so here this will create logging tables if you want like whenever those logging tables as we discussed this will be created here uh, again let's see so from lt or slt side what we need to know is this will be the cockpit or you can say one stop t code for us where if you want to check anything and for slt consultant they will configure this settings here. So whatever we discussed, so that they will configure here in this LTRC, LTRS. So LTRC is for cockpit, LTRS is where they will perform the settings. So here, so the option which I was discussing, like <clears throat> what are the filters that you can configure if uh, you want to test something, whether you want to limit basically what data you want in central finance system. So apart from CFIN source set, so in CFIN source set, we just can give company code. But if you want additional filters, uh, you will inform SLT consultant and they will perform the settings here in this. Basically, what you can see is this SLT or LTRC will give you an additional filtering option. It will act as in your intermediary for transferring the data, like pulling the data from source system and then transferring it to central finance system. Here you can define what are the objects that you want to move to central finance system. Those objects of course needs to be within the scope of the central finance solution, which is being provided by uh, SAP. In CFIN source it, you can only give company code what is what it is in the scope. So after we activate it, it will pull all the data from this particular company code, let's say 1000 or CFS when we considered, so it will pull all the data. But what might be your requirement is that you don't want all the data. You, like if you give any filter, SLT system can configure it and it will be replicated as per that way, whether you want it ledger or document type. But yes, functionally you need to, function means legally or the from the legal reporting side or managerial reporting side, you need to be double sure whether you want to have that filter or not. But yes, you can include any fields which is in your, system like BKPFB seg and then based on that SLT has the capability to filter but the primary scope will be this so anything coming from CFS one you can give an additional filter if you don't want to that in the central finance system. Again here also this parts will not configure but <coughs> basically when we uh, when they set up this logging function so this will create an additional logging table into central uh, in the SLT system and that will kind of 
it will be deleted in the real time. Let's say there is one document posted and it has come triggered, been triggered to SLT. So then SLT will use that as a kind of queuing group so that it will monitor. So that statistics basically it will come in the here what we saw. That from there, based on those logging tables only, it will monitor how many data have been inserted, updated, or uh, deleted. So once the data is inserted means uh, the in source system in staging tables there has been some data which has been posted when it's passed on successfully to the central finance layer in the aif then it will say okay it has updated the record and the data has been posted and once it has been deleted from logging table or it has been deleted due to any other reason it will get updated here so mostly if we need to be worried about these two parts whether the data which has been Creating, let's say we are posting an EFI document or cost object or anything which is in our scope. Whenever you are posting in source, this should be inserted in this SLT. Uh, basically, this will be the logging tables of your source system. So that should be inserted there. And once that is inserted, our objective is that it should be successfully posted to central finance system. So these two tables uh, are relevant. So if there is some delay or there is some issue from SLT side or RFC connection, so those it can be tracked down from here. So if I have to conclude anything, what does this table mean at a time? Like what does this data mean at a time to be precise? So what I will conclude is that, okay, these records have been successfully updated in the logging tables, but there can be some issue in either SLT or central finance, which is stopping the data to be transferred from the uh, to the central finance system. Again, this can be technical issue, functional issue. It can be anything. It just is that there is some issue and it has not been transferred. Again, to add to that, so just like we have model company codes and other uh, kind of standard uh, setups which are provided by SAP to kind of expedite the implementation process. Uh, similar way here for this objects also, SAP gives some predefined objects all for all these objects and we can use and modify uh, like SLT consultants can use and modify the same thing uh, in order to connect it to connect it better or you can say to connect to the source system. Again, like let's say that if there is any issues or let's say that if you are stuck somewhere, it is not happening. So so there is one SAP note which is given as SAP FAQ notes. So that SAP note will uh, give kind of all the answers. That is a very big note. But again, that will have answers to mostly like what could be the note missing because uh, especially for source system, there is nothing much config. So if there is anything, let's say uh, for central payment, if you're activating there is and the documents are not flowing as expected in the source. So most probably are the in 90% of the cases, the region is uh, either one or the other notes, SAP notes are missing that needs to be checked and implemented. Uh, so in previous PPT, I have already covered the basic notes, which contains the list of notes and which SAP keeps updating uh, whenever there is any change, uh, whenever there is any change in those note lists or if there is any bug fixes or additional functionalities are created. But yes, from time to time, we need to keep check, uh, checking these notes if there is any missing functionalities or missing data. Again, here also in same way as in source system, the first thing that we need to check is whether central finance business function is activated or not. Because if that is not activated, uh, technically we can't do anything before it is activated. So again, for this also, we have the same way. Either we can check in CFIN IMG, whether the CFIN IMG T code is activated or not. And so if it is, see, this is central finance. So here we will find uh, configurations for both source system settings as well as the target system setting because your s for system can be used as both source system as well as target system but if you see in your ecc system when we did we were only able to see the source system setting and that to only one part uh, that particular this table whether this is there or not but when it is s for hana we can we will have the multiple options Again, we can check uh, whether the central uh, this business function either via this way or you can also check in the uh, T code SFW5, I guess if I remember. Yes, so here you can. Okay, I think already there is a 
dumps but what we can what we need to see is i think everything is not coming but what we need to see is whether we, we can have we have this fins underscore cfin implemented or not under the basic function set okay let me i think it's searching yes so here you can see whether the central finance is in this business function should be there implemented so here this cloud version is also there but again this will depend based on which version of central finance we are working on so since we are working on the on premise version currently uh, to check so we should check whether this business function is there or not so if this is not there you will also not say anything in the cfin img so this this particular node itself you will not find you will see, uh, get an error that uh, this t code does not exist again in this we don't need to understand anything from this we just need to just check that whether this is activated or not okay coming back to so in this part we will uh, in the central finance configuration we will structure our activities into two part one is that what are the cfin specific configuration and the second is and the general settings like uh, as we configured the company codes uh, in the center, uh, in the source system so ideally that part will not be in the scope of our project because already the, the company codes in source systems are configured and they are working on the processes so that part we did for our understanding so that we'll have the scope or we'll know what all we have configured and so that we can map it accordingly but in central finance system since we'll be starting with the new box so we need to configure the general settings for company code as well so whatever <coughs> we discuss based on the mapping or based on the functionalities as well as the fit cap workshops so we'll identify the to be process which needs to be implemented in central finance and based on that we'll configure the company code settings in the cfin system so central finance will have if you have to define it into multiple segments so one will be your general settings one will be your cfin related configs then again it will come your mapping related activities where we will map what you have what is existing in the source versus what you created in target or cfin system uh, then you will have initial road error monitoring and replication so that will be the structure of activities in general that we need to perform as a finance consultant or which we need to monitor as a finance consultant again since we are using this particular system for our target system or as a central finance system so under the source system setting we will not be configuring anything it will be <coughs> like we are this is not part of what will be using or not part of our scope so we will be using this particular target system settings and then we'll configure but again we can configure only few basic settings first and then once we have the company code setups ready then accordingly we can perform the additional uh, configuration uh, such as for mapping or for initial load etc coming to basic settings again business function we have already checked in this business function you will find some information similar that you should have must and this is the structure you will to redirect you to the same t code when we checked already that it's there or this is implemented and again you will not be able to activate unless the license is already purchased by your client again coming back to Okay, let me show this separately or maybe we can come back again so similar to cfin amg for sap note we will have cfin t code so under this it's already handled into segregated into multiple segments how we want so 
HTC code interface monitor. So whenever we are, so if this error handling is not configured, then this part it will be coming as blank. So you need to configure your own user ID. So if I will remove my user ID from that particular config, so I will not be able to see. So let's say that when <clears throat> whenever you are uh, let's say logging into your system, so try executing this T code. So you will not find anything currently here. So like the way I am able to see the statistics, you will not be able to see. So before you can see this, what are the data which are stuck? You need to find out. Uh, you need to add your ID, user ID in the fin CF node. So again, this will be done by technical basis, but we need to again check whether this is this configuration have been done or not. So first is this one. So this will be nothing but the interface under which you will be uh, replicating your document. So if I go back to your error screen. Uh, here also we can see. So when check the don uh, documents, we will have multiple option. One is this one. OK, so. This so under fin CF, what we have assigned here is that for all this FICO posting, I want fin CF and then config ID CF1. So similarly, let's say that if you have configured anything new, if there is anything we can check here, this Cheriba, but you can configure your own this interface name space or in interface as well. Again, so this part, if you do so, once you assign this, then only you will be able to see here. So this will be. Uh, this settings will be general under which interface you want to see the data. Let's say that for this you can have for controlling you can have a different interface or namespace for cost objects. You can have a different one, so you don't want to see everything in under one interface. Then you can configure that here, but the way you. Configure this. For your runtime replication objects, same way it will be visible in your uh, the interface monitor. Or whenever you are even handling the error to segregate it. So uh, let's say so this is one way where you can check in the summarized way. So here you will get everything. So same thing you can check in the error wave also. So it will open a webbed in pro page, or you can directly check it here as well. So here you need to give the interface. So we configured we have FinCF which is delivered by by default SAP standard. So in this, if you want to check only for accounting document. Or you can say that this part of the postings. FI documents plus CO documents which are. Created as from the FI documents, so basically FI plus primary cost postings or primary cost element posting so that you can check under this accounting document one. So if we see. There might not be anything posted. So I'm selecting everything. Yeah, this is not set up, so we might not have data. From our system. Yes, so nothing is posted, but once we have the data, once you have the data triggered from SLT system, you will be able to see that here. So in this we will have multiple filters. So. One is that this interface you need to select whatever you are giving so this your this AC doc and other things will remain same. Only thing is namespace you can configure new if there should not be any business requirement because even if you create a new it will follow the same logic. Uh, but yes, there's an if the client wants or if there is a requirement this can be configured. Yeah, and then this will be the data which we are selecting here. So this will be your. Uh, for the added selection which you can show this will be mostly from the source system again if you are using during live projects when you are working this differs quite heavily based on which version of s4 hana or which version of cfin client is using so this company code and this additional filters this came into the newer versions earlier it was only logical systems and also but again based on the filters you can create new also by a custom development or even by any standard, there is some options to enhance it with limited fields, of course, but this will be can be configured the way it is posted. So this will be your selections from source systems. 
uh, to monitor the errors. So whatever documents are posted in each of these interfaces. Either accounting, secondary cost posting or cost objects. So again, we'll have cost objects. And. This uh, cost object and CO documents, we have the simulation as well, so we'll come to know. I will discuss again like why there are two objects while for accounting document we just have one. So, but again, if there is simulation posting, so that will be part of initial load when we discuss, then we'll discuss more into detail. But again, this everything will be coming under this multiple segment. So if you don't give anything, then it will give everything in the output. Uh, OK, so this part, yes, and also let's say that especially this will be helpful when you are working on the POC. So then there will be a lot of errors and the volume will be quite high. And you want to tackle all the errors one by one. Let's say that you have a particular related to new GL account, new GLs. So then you can give the message class related to new GL. So everything, and if you have again segregate, can segregate by message number as well. So what was, I would say, if based on my personal experience, so new GL, I had a lot of errors when working on the starting ones or master related objects. So based on message class, we can group the errors so that at particular point we can tackle one particular group or again it will be helpful when let's say on real time project when you are working there will be few resources which will be having an expertise in particular area while others will be having so in different area so it will be helpful in splitting by that as well so that one rather than getting all the errors in one go because during starting phases you will have like millions of error or maybe at least thousands of error. So if you open it every time, it will take a lot of time to open then load and then one by one. So rather than that, we can filter by the message class or the error group and then. You can work on uh, resolving those, those errors in this. We can use to create the. Filter again based on what time the document was posted. This is message GUID is nothing but I think we already discussed nothing but the unique identifier for any particular document and timestamp. Let's say that <coughs> you have posted one document in the source system. It will get stored in the CFIN CCHD and IT table. So for that, similar to what we use in the company code document number as fiscal year as the one unique identifier. So for central finance, this GUID will be your unique identifier for a particular document on a particular day or timestamp. Because yeah, once for one single document, we can trigger multiple times also. So first time it will trigger get triggered man, uh, automatically, but for if needed, we can re-trigger it second time also. So in that time, or as many times as we need for that matter. So during for each trigger, it will create a new grid. So basically, grid is nothing but one unique identifier per trigger. Or per database trigger because yes, as we discussed, SLT is kind of our replicates based on the database trigger. It's not the bad job or not the bad simulation where it will pick the data and on a particular time interval and then it will load the data. Rather, it works on the database trigger. Whenever there is a change in database, it creates a change or the replication entry, which is nothing which can be identified using a message GUID or GUID, which we commonly say. So these two are self explanatory. So process successfully. That means it was posted without error processed with warning means it encountered some or the other errors. But those were uh, configured as warning messages in uh, either you can say yes in the message class settings or based on whatever configuration is there. Those were classified with the warning message. So there are so those were processed with warnings. This application errors and technical errors. You will have in the error format. Let's say that if there is any technical error or system related errors uh, from the technical side, those will come under technical errors. If there is any functional functionality related, let's say master data missing or configuration inconsistency, those will come under application errors. So these four we discussed now coming to in process and canceled canceled messages. So cancelled message, let's say that uh, there is one good which is triggered to source system. So let me check if there is something. Yeah, 
Let's move everything. Then maybe I can show you one by canceling as well. Then Finn, see if there is nothing uh, accounting document. So I'm trying to check if there is anything on other. Last two weeks, I guess we have some data. So if you see this particular document, so here I think yes. So since it's open, I will explain these tabs as well. So for any particular document, so whenever be it of any interface, so you will find multiple options. And so this will be a kind of the standard interface um, which you will see for any error. So whenever any trigger is happening or whenever any database trigger is happening, it will create a unique GUID, and that in turn will create a an error or Posting so there can be multiple statuses. So in this particular case, it's in error. It can be in process. And in this so in accounting document also you will have header data item data. So this naming will change, but the structure will somewhat remain same and self explanatory. So in accounting document you will have header, header data item data. Tax information. And clearing information. So again. So basically this is the data which is coming from source system and it will include the uh, data which is created as per mapping as well. So let's say if uh, you have the company code here and you want post it to map to a different company code. So those company codes and other information which you can see here in this table. So for each of the segments uh, you will have no you can know beforehand only what data if it is in error you can check what is the data that has come into the for postings to central finance. So it's kind of if it is in error, you can review the mappings also whether everything has been picking as per mapping or not. OK, so in this, as you can see here, because we have not mapped anything for. As still yet, so it isn't going into. Company code mapping error. So once you map company code, there'll be multiple mappings which is based on the company code, so then you can get those errors. So it, this does not mean that you only have this error in the for the particular document. It can be that once you fix this, you will get other errors as well. Which are dependent on this. So again. In the layout you can. Check other fields as well. Here you can see your message class and number as well. If you, have, if you have, think it's not yet configured, but yes. So here you can see the message class and number. What is the mapping? So if you see this message class, so if you want to segregate based on uh, the error category, so let's say that. There is a different team for map which is looking into mapping errors, multiple teams which is looking into your accounting document error, or even some standard errors also you will get related to like whatever you get in the normal ECC systems. So if there is an inconsistency related to those, so those errors will also get. So you can again categorize based on the message class and error in the selection and screen itself. Again, we'll come back to AIF once we have configured everything because with AIF, a lot of functionalities and possibilities are there, and it's kind of uh, life severe for us as a functional consultant during the implementation. So again, let's say that we know this is that this map particular mapping is a frequent error, and so ideally we will need to go to mapping T code and then maintain. So under the function step, you can configure directly that okay, if there is a particular error, go to this particular tab and then prefill the data. So I will just give a. So if you click on test function, so here you can. FFINS underscore C. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Here, based on what I think I clicked on, yes. So, here, 
if you click on ideally because in this we can't have the parameter but let's say that if you want to open something so you can also define the parameters which needs to be filled when uh, you are using the open so let's say that when we are testing this function we want that this is currently coming as blank so but we if you want we can have those parameters defined as well what are the things which we can configure also what we can do is let's say that when you are working on the implementation phase and you want to hand over it so we will prepare the documentation or give the documentation but for most of the time either we don't see those documentations or we don't have access to the documentation when the when it goes to support team or it's xyz reasons can be for that or it is not updated there can be xyz reason so what you can do is under this hint section you can directly maintain if you want to have a maintain any instruction like if this error comes what needs to be done so this will again not perform any activity but when you are working on a project during the implementation you can make life easier for other support consultants uh, by giving an instruction of how, how you resolve this error or for your own reminder also you can keep this that if the this error comes follow these steps or analyze in this way like yeah it is a text format so you can maintain anything which you feel that it can be helpful to you or uh, other resources going forward whenever this error comes again so then we were discussing about the other two status which is cancelled and the in process one uh, so in process is nothing but let's say when you post a document it's let's say posted with a clearing document with uh, one lakh line items so it will take some time to for slt to fetch the data once slt fits uh, gets the data it will transfer to central finance and once it comes to central finance it will create a background job which will post that particular document so it might take some time based on the system availability resource even hours to post a document so during that phase how will you know whether a document which you have posted is in what state so one if it is in process stage you will uh, see just like kind of an error i think in this you can see those icons as well so it will be an error like this so if this is the error you can know that okay the document is still not yet uh, completed with the processing so once the processing is complete you can have either error or technical errors or even uh, you can say that it was posted with warning or not so once it it starts within process then it goes into any one of the status based on the configuration again in process you will have multiple subcategories as well so it can be not processed due to multiple reason let's say you have posted an open item and clearing also and your open item when you posted it goes into let's say this error so that company code is not mapped so when you post a clearing document it will first look for whether that open item is posted or not if the open item is not posted it will not be able to even process because the uh, it will not be able to complete the job because for any clearing document the open items are kind of prerequisites until the open item is posted uh, you can't like the system will not be able to even start working on posting to those documents so that will remain as until uh, in the in process status until we have the open item document posted again for in process also it can be multiple reasons uh, i just give an example of open item uh, the simple example other could be the job was not successful uh, there is one dependent quid so there are at least five to six reasons major reasons which can uh, stop the documents from in processing further or to remain in process again uh, the last status which is the cancel status so cancel let's say that due to some so when we were discussing the buffer state like in the slt side how many records are inserted or not so in that there are two again i will be going a bit technical so there will be one synchronous replication non -synch asynchronous replication so with that what slt can check is it will constantly check the aif status whether a document is posted or not and if it's files finds that is not posted or if it doesn't find a job of the posting sometimes 
it tree triggers that particular document automatically. So if you tree triggers, you will have the two documents, uh, two GUIDs, not two documents, rather two GUIDs in the AIF monitor for the same document. And then let's say later it comes into the error and you fix this and it gets posted. The, so the second GUID which you generated, it will go into the error that this document is already posted or this is a duplicate GUID. So under those cases, or let's say that you posted uh, that document was not, you are not able to fix that particular document and you asked business to do a manual entry to fix those differences. So under those business cases, you might there will be situations where you don't need that particular document in the central finance anymore. So for you, then there are two options. So either you keep the that document in the error stage only. Or you remove that document from this monitor. So if you keep that into error state permanently, then the risk is that whenever you open this AIF, you will have a document into error and then you need to manually like think back. OK, I remember that. OK, this is a document which I don't want and this should remain in error. So we don't want that situation to happen because again it will. Increase our time and. It will not add any value yet. So for that what we can do is. We can cancel the document. So if you cancel the document. So let me try to cancel this one with technical error. So. If you click on this. Cancellation. This will cancel. So, so now you can't reprocess this document, or you, this document cannot come automatically now. So, if you need this document, either by some way you need to trigger the document, or you can you have to ask SLT to re-import this document. But from functional side, you cannot have this particular GUID, or I would say personal GUID, not the replication, because there are few other ways also to import it. But for this particular good, you will not be able to reprocess or get this document into central finance system. So for any such like status, which document to know what are the documents if someone has canceled it from the central finance system, let's say business complaints after some times that OK, this is the document which you posted in the source system. Why it has not come into central finance and you don't find into error, you don't find it in the posting status. So for that you can check who or when whether it was cancelled or not again. Uh, this log table you can use to. Find out what log was changed uh, like what were the. Sequence of activities on this particular uh, good. So if I go back to log, I will click. So here if we see. You can have. Because it was only one that whenever when it came to the central finance already it came into error and then we cancelled it. So so here we will see, but in real there can be multiple situation that one is that uh, if we discuss about this. So currently it is in the company code error. Let's say you map the company code. So then let's say it goes into uh, I probably I guess since we have not mapped anything, probably it will go into GL account mapping error. Similarly, once you map the GL account, it can go to other errors as well or at later point at last it will get posted. So in that cases. By user ID, you can find the logs here. That who did what activities? So here if I see. So here the first error when the document came on 69, it was with the error that logical system is not could not be determined. But then this particular user EST admin made some changes and then. You can see that this error that error went and this new error came. So once you fix this. Probably you will get a new error, then you will get one new message class here. If it goes posted, then also you will have one with the uh, green icon whether OK by this user. This document was posted and what uh, it will not show the activity, but it will say the log by when the by how the document was posted. Is it any doubts till now? OK, then coming back to from a side, we have one more thing. 
this emergency correction. So I will take the application process. This again technical node we don't need is it will just give the technical information. So I will just show it once. Coming back to this emergency correction. So this emergency correction you should it use it as the name suggests only on the rare cases which when you are not able to fix the documents uh, directly via config or manual or <coughs> you need something to be posted urgently and you don't have time to configure the mapping or if there is any configuration consistency. So what it will do is so let's say. Oh, I should have given the maximum number. So whenever you want to make any changes in the runtime into the AIF. I think OK for one document which we saw this error was fixed. So let me try to reprocess. So when we do reprocessing. With this icon, so it will try to again repost the documents. So whenever you are trying to fix any mapping or configuration, which you are not doing as part in the emergency correction, you can always try to reprocess like we should always reprocess and then only the system will know whether the document has been posted or not. I means if it can be posted or not. So when I reprocess it, the system tried to repost that document and then it went into this particular error. So yes, so that was that is one activity that we need to keep in mind that after fixing anything, uh, any mapping or configuration or any error, we should reprocess the good. Then only we'll know whether our fix has worked or not. So let's say <coughs> that this is into this error. And we don't have the mapping ready or let's say we don't have access to map the part, uh, particular company code or the mapping objects. But we know OK this uh, this company code 1000 is not mapped, but it should be mapped to uh, let's say 5000. So in this. You can directly change the values here. So let's say I will give to let's say 001. It will go into error again because it will not be consistent. We, we need to know where all we need to change. But uh, what is important here to know is that we can change the values in the runtime via emergency correction. So let's say this and whenever you are doing any emergency correction. OK, I have changed controlling area rather than company code, but OK. So whenever we are doing emergency correction, we should not do the reprocess because if you reprocess whatever changes we have done, let's say I have updated controlling area from 1000 to triple zero one. So that will get overwritten and again it will be changed back to 1000. So whenever we are doing any update in this line item information, we should always go ahead with the repost with user changes. So this repost with user changes will first ask whether you want to save the data again for saving. You have two options. So either let's say that I have clicked on here and I click on save here. So it will automatically first save whatever changes you have done. So now it will update the controlling area from 1000 to triple zero one. And then if you click on repost with user changes, it will just reprocess the document with whatever changes you have made it. Again, if we see the logs, it will come with one current change to date. Okay, I try to do something. So here, if you see, it went into first the logical system error. First time when I reprocessed, this error was resolved, and this error came. Again, I reprocessed this time, so no change. So that means it's just saying that the alert was already there. And it came back again with the same error. So it will give the reprocessing log with the error each time whenever you reprocess. Again, let's say that I change it to. Again, one more thing that if you restart, let's say that I have posted, so it will keep this data as triple zero one only, which I updated from thousand to triple zero one. But if I restart, click on restart rather than repost with user changes. Anytime after I have done this repost user changes, it will again redirect back to 1000. So 
that helps let's say that you have one one error you try to resolve it by changing some field which you thought might work but it didn't work so you want to get it back to the original state in which the data came from the slt or the data in which it was posted so to revert back all the changes because you might not remember what all changes you did like because i updated your just controlling area maybe that i can update five or six fields and after one day i might not remember what all fields i changed so whenever any reprocessing happens like normal reprocessing not repost future changes it will go back to what are the changes which were originally came from slt or source system based on the staging tables so if i reprocess it again it will change back to whatever it was earlier it came back to 1000 so both helps again based on the business need we need to use it in on this part again yes this custom hint message text etc we discussed already this part you you can uh, you can use this sections for any kind of document be it uh, project be it uh, wbs cost object or accounting or co document you can use it to verify the data okay then coming to yes message class it, you can limit it how many messages you want it is again same as the standard when we used to limit the messages hey guys just a quick info zantic offers training for scb s4 hana central finance this course instructs professionals on how to optimize financial processes streamline accounting and reporting improve data quality and support budgeting and forecasting thousands have already used this program to advance their sap careers like those who have shared their success stories on zarentex youtube channel their testimonials demonstrate how this course can boost sap skills in just a few weeks you can gain the knowledge needed to leverage sap s4 hana central finance This can open doors to new jobs opportunity or help you excel in your current role. The Zarentech SAP Central Finance training distills a complex topic into a clear insights and actionable skills. Visit the link below to learn more about Zarentech's SAP S4 HANA Central Finance course. Getting started now is the smart first step 